Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more Dota 2 action here. We've got Virtus Pro vs OG game number two. Gods joined by Winter. Winter, game number one, a wrap. We felt OG maybe a bit too greedy with some of their picks, their drafts, and VP definitely punished it from the get-go in the laning stage. Time for adjustments, you've got to imagine, out of OG. Nice soccer ban. So, last game they picked the hero first, and... I don't know, like, I think most of the teams value the hero very highly. Like, both the LGD teams, they value the hero highly, and they're top of their groups. Yeah, I think this hero is very pretty, very hard to deal with if you know how to utilize yep. utilize him in the laning phase and the vision control. It was, Af I think, Afu from LFY who really first started pushing the hero in the competitive meta game. Um, no, before that, the event started, I can't remember who was picking the hero a lot, but before that, uh, a lot of, uh, there's someone picking the hero. Ever since they changed the, you know, the passive into the flying, the flying yeah. uh, that was actually so good for him. It's a cool change. It makes him a lot it, more fun and exciting it, it to watch. It makes you not rely on the Aghanims as much. Yep. Yeah, you can find heroes who are trying to kite and juke you. It gives you an escape where you can escape and your opponents can't actually chase you. Really it's opens too, up too a lot of possibility. With the, uh, change. Yeah, they, the spell has received some nerfs, so we are seeing a slightly watered down version of the, the new Night Stalker. Oh. Banned in game one, the picked in game two. The guy. Both these heroes were first stage banned. The Wyvern VP first banned, and OG actually banned. Well, no, was it OG who banned Ogre? A different team banned Ogre. No, um, not OG. Today. OG um, didn't ban Ogre. Some team. I think it was uh, Cloud9 who banned Ogre against me. Ah, this guy is back. Yeah. The VP solo special, one of the best Ogres around. I feel like it must have been something that's been happening in scrims for team to actually come in and first pick the hero and first ban it against VP. They must have seen VP playing it in scrims. So the way they run this ogre is like a position five, not a position four, and yep. he's gonna like hot, sit hot mid, the mid lane. <laughs> yep, he ogre is... sniper, ogre queen of pain. Good luck, Anna. Just as if the last game wasn't as well, bad. Anna's not going mid. They picked the no tails. Like, don't worry, bro. I've got you. I'll I'll, I'll go mid. <laughs> Give me brew. I'll I'll take the mid lane. Um, <laughs> earlier today they had a no tail mid brew. It's kind of more just like a sacrificial mid in some ways. It reminds me a lot of like how Dragon Knight plays out with maybe a bit more team fight presence at level six, but it's kind of this mid that can go there, be tanky, hard to kill. They should give him Dragon Knight. I agree. <laughs> give him more Dragon Knight. It's one of his best heroes. But uh it won't be a Dragon Knight with the Brewmaster, I can only imagine. Uh why well, why not? Brewmaster could, could be off lane. Yeah that's true. S4 has played the Brew as well. Can take the Brewmaster and Let's say put uh, no t when they have a Brewmaster plus Dragonite, then they take a Terra Blade, have like a push kind of strat or Draw Ranger. I think I think Draw Ranger is okay. Draw DK. Yeah, Draw DK is okay. We'll see what they want to go for for now. PL band out. There is definitely flexibility with the Brew pick, as you mentioned. Can go off lane, can go mid, can even go safe lane. Not most of the preferred. two hero opening. The first two hero openings of are their flexi picks for VP. Their flexi pick is a Sand King because Pasha and Lil plays the hero. For OG, why is the Brewmaster a flexi? So yes as well. We do see a lot of team opening up with their two supports as well, I'd say. Uh yeah, that's the like Chinese. a lot of the games were casting Chinese, early uh Chinese teams. LGD like they are but their two supports could be uh, off lane, like sometimes like, they would well, we saw that from uh, Liquid and L G D. Like Liquid would just pick up Kuro and GH's heroes first two. Uh, so I would say IO, it's IO Spirit Breaker. IO, IO Spirit Tusk. Breaker, IO Tusk, yeah, exactly. So I think Liquid's another team that hides their core heroes for a while, but... Because that team is the tri-core team. They uh, they draft around their yeah, three cores getting equal amounts of... Like a spread across the three cores, and the two supports don't get too much farm. Like, every team has yeah, their own uh, preference and how they distribute their goal. Yep. Everyone has their distributions of the pizza, you know? Everyone gets different amount of <laughs> slices of pizza. <laughs> some players getting more, some getting less. When you have... When you are VP, you're definitely giving Mr. No One the most. Mr. Yeah. No One and Ramses and the other three less. Yep. Maybe not less, but the remake, whatever the, re whatever <laughs> the remake Yeah, is. No One and Ramses get first choice of their slices, you know. They're going to get the, huh. the big pieces with all the, the toppings and ingredients. They ban out the Enigma. S4 why, why Enigma? Not Enigma Probably maybe they're going to be picking some kind of a melee carry that complements the Bloodlust. Yeah, 
like a life life steal is quite annoying. But life steal a troll Ursa. could be an option. Ursa, yeah, yeah I was thinking troll. Ursa. Those are the heroes that they pair with. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, Od doesn't worry about. I mean, Od does. Yep. Yeah. Od sniper. Ursa. For OG, they're banning out those bloodlust partners. Starting with the sniper, I wouldn't be surprised to see like sniper a sniper. It's not only the bloodlust partner. It's like the because the lane. It's one of the easiest to kill in the lane. The Ignite plus the Shrapnel yeah. dead hero. We'll see what else they ban out, whether it's going to be another Bloodless hero or even target some of the other lanes. That Pasha hero pool, but other than the Darkseer, they've already banned out, and the bat, it feels like they can just target some of the, the Bloodlust companions. Okay, so... Are we going to see Alacrity Panda? <laughs> They use a lot of their reserve time to get to that Silencer ban. So, Silencer, a mid hero that no one has played from time to time, and a very niche pick, but a hero that again uh, benefits from the Bloodlust. Silencer counters two of their heroes, the, the yep. current two picks. Very bad against the. Very bad for the Wyvern and Blue play against Silencer. They go for instead okay, this Death is the Prophet. Mid, the mid pressure, the dual pressure over yep. Death Prophet. And that's where silence. I <laughs> the silence is very good against the brew. We have to, uh, that's where you can't see like a mid hero like the invoker kind of left on on his own again. You need help in the mid lane, or you need like a dragonite brewmaster. <laughs> just I think the brewmaster uh, may just go mid, but dragonite is also gonna have <laughs> yeah and, time. Any hero is gonna have time is the the reality, I guess. Uh, Perhaps not like what viper maybe. Queen sure. of pain is actually gonna be fine because every time they do the drain and the ignite, you just blink. Sure. They take that approach. They're going to grab a hero to actually pressure the mid and play around. The best Earth Spirit? Jerex. The one, the only. They so they have a good balance uh, around their team fights. Good lane. Oh, okay. Lils, so Sand King, Enchantress. They spot weakness because Wyvern, Earth Spirit, they show their two supports. These two supports cannot deal with the creep. And they are not very strong in the lane. And Ogre and Enchantress. On the other hand, these are two heroes designed to win the laning phase. Yeah. Well, I feel like OG have to pick strong laners, and Pugna is going to be the hero of choice here. Uh, Interesting. Mm. Typically run in the mid lane, may suggest the Brew going off lane, but also a very Car squishy hero Carry against the Death Prophet Ogre. Pugna, maybe? Yeah, maybe safe lane. Not great against Enchantress rotations, I feel, though. Are like a Sand King Enchantress can run all over. They're gonna Pugna. pick some anti mage. Okay, no, <laughs> no, because <laughs> anti mage. Uh, I look at these four heroes: the Pugna, Earl Spirit, Blue, Wyvern. It's like hiding a big hero. It's like probably like some big like game cat, right? Here. Am morphing that. I am. Um. Go. They need someone that can resist the Enchantress, like hold the Enchantress pressure, because Enchantress is gonna annoy the shit out of you in the early game. Like it's gonna be very difficult to play. Sand King, Ogre, and Chandra. It's someone that is hard to gank, can survive mm. in the lane, and can carry it later part. And Morphing's that good again. At the... It's tough. Kind of maybe want some burst damage as well against the Death Prophet. If you want to fight into... If uh, ever fight into them, you need to be able to kill her quickly with the Exorcism. Quite hard to pick here. Anti-Mage would have been great for that, because you, if you blink in with Manta Illusions, you burn a Mana, Mana Void is there. It is, it is a hero with items that can quickly blow up a Death Prophet. Instead, where do we look? OG don't have much time. They only have three seconds of reserve time. Sure don't pull a newbie in random. I'm not sure what they're going to... It's going to be the gonna... Morphling. They're going to go for the big late game carry. Uh, but it's not very good here. It's, I mean, it's one of their better choices. Because the Enchantress can move your replica. I mean, yeah. you can still jump to it, but you won't be able to hit targets with it. I mean, I mean, you can still use it just as an escape tool, not yeah. a fighting tool. But you can't control where it goes. That's the other, thing. other than that, interaction between the two heroes, would you say Morph is fine against Enchantress? It's okay against Enchantress. Not like not the greatest, not the worst. Yeah. You ask but for a carry with some escape against the Enchantress. Yeah, so. but then your laning phase is gonna be tough, you know. Sand King, and Sand yep. Morphing is a short range hero in the lane, so Caustic is gonna be a problem for you. And then on top of that, there's going to be some big creep running into your lane, shock waving you. And now there's going to be a bear. Um, so the, it's uh, very, very aggressive, like very fast paced. They are not even choosing to pick like late gamer to go up against the morphing. They're just going to be all out aggression. It's 15, 20 minutes. They have uh, good lanes. Tower hitter in Death Prophet. They have a Roshan killer also. So the pace of the game will be the like, first 15 minutes is going to be really quick. Probably. 
they're gonna try to steamroll you. But the Enchantress is gonna try to. So I think the best play is to destroy the Morphing State. Go wherever the Morphing goes. Ursa will be fine on his own. The Brew Ogre is gonna destroy me with the Death Prophet. The plan is by the end of uh, the laning phase, three lanes won. Yep. And then they take your towers one by one and Roshan. This really feels like, in a lot of ways, a continuation of that Kiev Major Grand Finals. It was always VP being the aggressors, winning the lanes, and OG playing from behind. We're seeing that again here in this series. Very, very hard. But they do have a lot of like wave clear to hold the, the game. Like Wave clear is one of the better ways to draw out the game. They have Wyvern, Splinter Bass, Pugna, Brewmaster some, in some ways. I think they do have the necessary tools to hold out the game, provided they can limit the damage done by Enchantress. Yep. It's not an easy job. Like the Earth Spirit, I think the Earth Spirit has to like follow him along, block the camps with sentries or body block, whatever. Do it. Do whatever he can to slow the Ench down. Like the Ench is the key hero here. Like he needs to be stopped. You can't kill him as the Earth Spirit, but you need to make sure that he has to spend a lot of time to grab a creep, annoy him, and. And the main thing is keep vision on him. You must make sure you see him and protect your lanes. If the Enchantress doesn't gank the Morphling lane or the mid lane, then fine for you. Yeah, you're kind of acting as a, a warning signal for your other lanes as to where people are going. We'll see the early TPs out. Jerex TPs and rolls does yeah. not catch Solo. Look at Solo. Where is he going to yeah. place the two wards? So he's going to have one vision. Oh, this unblocks the camp. Yeah. And gives some good vision. Yeah, this is going to help, help them a lot to pressure to win the lane. And the other one should be Ooh. around the mid lane. Jarex walks past and he may get spotted planting this ward if yeah. he's not careful. No, look, look at his item as well. This, this tells a lot. He his went for boots. boots. Yeah, he wants to he went for, he went for chase boots. the Ench. He's going to, I think, look to scout the Ench. Well, even just look at his first ward. It scouts out the Enchantress's jungle. Yeah. Uh, and there's a Radiant Sentry. They thought, actually, that he was going in to block camp. So they guess wrong, but they have the right idea. They know Jarex is going to be messing with the Enchantress. That is going to be the key thing here. Jerax is trying to maybe hide the fact that he does have Observer Ward up there. Doesn't it currently see the Sand King? Let's see if VP's plan will work. Three lanes victory. Enchantress top lane, Ogre mid lane. <laughs> Earth Spirit has a lot of work to do and Wyvern has to carry an early TP. Okay, he has a TP here. Seems like VP feel like these camps may be blocked. We'll see where Lil puts this other sentry, but he may guess wrong with this as well. Jerax is trying to like mind game them. This is a pretty unconventional ward spot for level 1, but very much with the idea in mind that this early level 1 movement yeah, is going to be key. Just, he expected the wards play somewhere, but... Oh, he scouted Jerex. Let's see if Jerex blocks the camp. Ah, he's going to body block. <laughs> he's going to body block the camp. Yeah. And maybe place the ward even? No. Enchantress uh, is going to the enemy jungle. Look ooh. at this. <laughs> says... Uh, you're going to mess with me? I'll... Uh, yeah, he, put, he, he put his ward down. Yeah, he put his ward on the sentry too, but... Gonna, he's, he's looking for him. He's just looking for him. This, this is the correct move. This is perfectly what he is supposed to do and what is he's meant to do in this game. He just needs to annoy Lil and follow him around. <laughs> Lil. <laughs> Kill oh, him. he got pinked. He, it looks like he was spotted. The courier's going to go back a different way, so that courier snipe not going to work this time. The battle around. of the position for Parker. Yeah, this is a uh, very thrilling stuff to watch. I'm enjoying. Centaur headed top. Not the best level one creep. But at least it's something. You and know what's the best level one speed? Shockwave. Yeah, shockwave. Where's the shockwave? The Harpy's not bad too. The little chain lightning fell. Uh, but you don't normally scout out the, yeah, the, the small That one's camp. harder to get. Yeah, though. you don't... One, it's yeah, it's not that common. And two, okay. it's... He goes back to his 100 goal. <laughs> yeah, nice. Now he finds it. So yeah, another Centaur. Where's the Osprey? Okay, he's not... Pick up an item. He yeah. does know where the Enchantress is now. Is he gonna get a smoke or something? No, it's not yeah, a but look, but look at the lane though. See, the Sand King is just playing really in the lane. Like, this lane is gonna be tough for Ana. Yep. But, double Sentinel coming in. Okay. Maybe damage and harass, but Pasha is getting a bit low from that Arctic burn. Yeah, look at mid lane. Oh. Oh. Potential first blood, no tail, very low. The Crypt Swarm will finish him off. Oh, as so the classic solo ogre camp and sit on mid lane strat is paying yeah, off here. This is okay, are they winning all three lanes now? Uh, uh, bottom kinda. lane S4 is slightly behind the CS. Mid lane is definitely being won. Top lane 
I don't know. I think you could argue that OG is still doing okay in this top lane for now. For now. But the Senki is going to pull a hit because the Enchantress is coming into the lane with the Centaurs and uh, this is going to be tough. Now he has level 2. It's refreshing the duration of the Centaur, waiting for the next chat here. As long as he stops the pull here, he, like, he, if he keeps the enemy from pulling and he controls the wave with the with the two Centaurs, with the Sanking stun, it's going to be very difficult for Ana to farm. Okay, triple stun incoming. Oh no, the oh, chain stun yay. is there. He's trying to morph his way through it, but he can't quite survive. Yeah. Now you can say perhaps three lanes have been won. No well, tail. No tail picks up the haste and goes to the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> He's farming bounty runes at this point, not creeps as a mid laner. That but, is concerning in itself. But he is not alchemist. He's not. Jarek's gonna roll on through, takes the centaur down. Nicely done. Didn't even chew through any of his stone remnant charges. Yeah, and, oh, he blocked the camera. So two minute cam. So that was important. Edge goes back, he has a all wing return. Mid lane, no tail. Uh oh. Not able to survive his way through that one as he does get brought down. This mid lane, disaster for game one for Anna, disaster for game two for no tail. This is just not a place you want to be against VP's pressure. First it was Lil's Nightstalker, now it's Solo's over. Oh, he's gonna die again, yeah? It's all good. He's not careful. He's has got Boots and Orb of oh, Venom. Oh, may find Jarex here, who doesn't have a roll. He does not want to run to the south. That's oh for sure. Oh my god, look at this. Two. This, these are two of the... Uh, I, I, to, to me, these are two of the strongest supports at level 1. Like early levels. You cannot fight an Ogre and Enchantress. You, you just can't. Yep. We're seeing it. <laughs> oh my god, okay. So, OG has to be patient and wait for... Wait for levels. Yeah, levels. Uh, when they get their Master RP, first free RP, they're going to be able to fight back. But right now, it is VP's game. Yeah, they are the ones dominating the laning stage, reflected in the, the early game CS of all the core heroes. VP. I think you, you can safely say all lanes lost, right? <laughs> yes, I would agree. Morphling has close to the same CS as Sanking, but does have the death, and ultimately, that's your safe lane Morphling that you're supporting with both, su both supports. And this mid lane Pugna is getting bullied badly. Osprey has to, yeah, he's gonna have to place wards around me. Yeah, he's gonna have to place one around the bot area. They can't see the, they feel very pressure now, they don't see the ogre. He is in the neighborhood, may find the initiation if they push forward. Okay, now they will. Jerickson, Solo. We're gonna scout one another out, it looks like Solo. Just can't really fight him. Yeah, I was like, Jerickson, are you sure you would be the one running forward? Does have a boulder smash to play oh, around. That, that feels so bad. Okay, they got a Top kill lane, on the Sand yeah, King, that's... but they're gonna lose the Wyvern. Ooh, one more right click. They may lose Lil though in the process. And it's got another waveform, and he gets the right click oh, as he does that it. Was big. That was big. That was fantastic. And he gets the troll. A little bit of extra gold going his way. As for trouble. He gets rotated on Solo's Ogre just everywhere on the map, and the TP has to be cancelled as Ramsey poses a threat to get an additional kill. Can't really set up a kill here in mid lane. Jerax just probably wants to place around the. He runs into the Lil's Enchantress, which means he's not got a chance to do it. He puts the ward in the mid high ground instead, but that's two wards in kind of close proximity at this mid lane. Not really the ideal spots to have. Uh, but still, like you can see that he just wants to have vision around. Yeah. Like, like Pugna is very vulnerable to this kind of rotation. Any. Like, Ogre behind him, he's stunning, like he's dead. And Chantus with a creep behind him, he's dead. So if... This is like... If Pugna loses this game, it will be the first game he, he lost in the tournament. Like, so far Pugna has won all games. I, yeah, it sounds... I know at least day one, I'm not sure what's happened today, but that does sound... Sound right. Definitely picked in a very tough laning situation, but... And bounce back. Oh, here comes the Ench with his uh, yep. Sator. OG do have three heroes at this top lane to combat this one. Oh, they can fight them with these two heroes. <laughs> and meanwhile, bottom lane, S4 is going to get gone on and brought down. Savage. Jumped by the Ogre rotation again. Top lane. Oh my god. And just oh. fleeing back to the tower. Lil doing work against them. Sanking just harassing Anna with Fire Strike Caustics. Gonna see a turnaround. Anna actually wants to go aggressive. May almost be able to bring down Pasha. Needed a couple more right clicks or another waveform, which he does not have. Now yeah. they're gonna shine up. Mid lane. 
another kill. Pugna goes down. God. Constant solo is mid. He's bottom. He's been in five of these seven kills. And then he hasn't been as that top lane, but he is winning both bottom and mid. Meanwhile, Enchantress is winning the top lane for them. The supports of VP being very influential in this early game. <laughs> Fly almost going down to the creep. Oh. He's like running him down with shockwaves. Oh man. Okay, so do they have... What, what? Look Panda at the Pan levels on these Pan supports. Panda has level 6. So, so, okay, Jerex is level 2? Wyvern? About to hit level 4. Wyvern's a bit more okay in terms of levels. Top lane, oh, doesn't hit the bar strike on Ana. Oh, Solo just gonna walk in, take some power, care, he's right older, click, you know. he's turn and fire blast. Anna's. Okay, they have Death on. Bruce split now. They should do something with this. They have to do something with yeah, this. Yeah, it looks like they're smoking up here around this bottom lane. Maybe smoke towards top. Oh, they're gonna try to kill Ramses. Okay. Uh, Tough mid, kill to get they're perhaps. Gonna go, where are they going? Mid yeah. lane, I wanna say. Put a ward down and go mid. Yeah, put a or ward bottom. Down. We'll find out soon enough as OG gonna leave Morphling alone. To his own devices, Ramses is headed towards this bottom rune, and looks Korea. like he will get. Oh, they even got oh, the Korea. Okay, that'd be a great two pickups if they can get it. Ramses. Oh my God, is he gonna get out? Okay, he no. doesn't look like it. He gets slowed down by the drunken haze. There's is gonna be a clap as well to hit. Oh, There's gonna the be the Epi. primal split. Epicenter coming in from Pasha from the side gets the bow strike as well. Ramses still low, does not have the ultimate. Where's that cyclone? It looks like he can't quite get in range. Throws the boulder from afar. They really want this Ursa. The brewmaster gonna be close to getting this kill. Is there gonna be enough damage? Should just get it. Yes, he does the win more. Good micro coming out. OG will lose the wyvern in the process, and S4 does not have an escape of his own. And Burrow strike back up. S4 should be going down as well as no one gets two kills in return. Take a look at some of these other lanes. Notel did get some good damage on the mid tower, but top lane is being bullied. Anna, sub 200 HP with no way of farming this top lane. Okay. That was quite a disastrous first boost split. They got one kill, but they lost two heroes. Uh, okay. Mid lane. Um, okay, that oh. was not gonna work. <laughs> Ramses chases him down. Use that decrap aggressively and did not have any solutions to the Ursa rotation in. They, they, they desperately need the two supports to be level six. Yep. That's gonna be another point where they can. Like, their team fight is strong. Earth Spirit, Ulti, Panda Ulti, and the uh, Wyvern Ulti. We need to, to Some, get to that somehow point. Somehow <laughs> get there. Earth Spirit's just level three at 10 minutes into this game. Even that Tomb of Knowledge is not going to solve that problem of getting to level 6. Anis? Farming okay, I think, is the one thing that is going alright for them, but... Yeah, that's... They dedicated so much resource to make sure that the Morphling can do okay. Yeah, as you can have to. You pick a Morphling, you, it's not a hero you want to have get shut down. It's not like kind of like a catch-up hero in that sense. Jerex here, it does look like BP just trying to... Oh my god, look at this ogre, he's lane. hitting the carry. <laughs> I mean, he was hitting the carry underneath the tower earlier. No one gets the kill mid on No-Tail, and Anna may actually just go down here at top lane, oh. gets Barry Strike, has a waveform soon. Does he have a TP to go with it? Oh, yes, he enough. does. Just enough, man. Yeah. Oh my god, that was so cool. He <laughs> barely gets away. Mid lane was where the Death Prophet managed to find a kill, and looking to work and on this tower for now, but is still fairly healthy. Boy oh boy, are things looking bad for OG right now. Yep. 4k plus gold lead, and we're just 11 minutes in. Wait till they get the tower top and they get Roche on. Yeah. <laughs> Towers, Roche. Definitely going to be easy for them to control Roche with this lead so they've got they and the a, Ursa. They have a Panda split again. Um, he is next. close to his blink. I mean, every speed after this has to net them something. They need to be able to get something. Seems for now they just want to work at this bottom lane. No tell just throwing out spells to try and zone mm. this Ursa away. Fly is almost level 6 though. Here yeah, comes creep. Sanking. No blink dagger, just... Oh, sorry. Here comes the Ogre. Sanking trying to finish his blink. He's at 2.1k gold. Jerax. Uh oh, he rolled into this one. He does get hit by the cold embrace as S4 is looking for that primal split opportunity. But with Death Prophet TPing in, I don't know if you want to fight this one. There may not be an Exism, but there is Spirit Siphon charges. And S4 is looking like he is in a world of trouble. 
Can't get out of that one. Doesn't even want to use the split because he realizes how important it's going to be. But the good news is Notel does get some good damage under the tower. Can't finish it off as he was running out of mana. But it will likely be taken down by VP. I guess space deny. for Mothling. Doesn't? Yeah, they, that, that feels like an okay sequence of events for him. They OG. managed to force four heroes, but I think that was okay. Yep. The mid tower went down as well sometime recently. So they've taken a couple towers of their own. It's still not by any means good, but they were. It was like a six k gold lead, and now we're down to yeah, I think more like four to a, five. Overall, it's a good uh, exchange for OG. And they still have split. Panda still quite close to his dagger. He, he, he look at S4. He's like such a team player. He's not even trying to farm his team. He's just trying to help his team. Rosh with the Ursa. OG knows it's going on. I guess Jurax is around there. Seems to know, but no one positioning on the outside of the pit, not wanting to get caught inside. They want to get this, they've got to get this soon. They need a big Winter's Curse. Level 6 is up on the Wyvern. It's up to fly. He scouts with the Replicate. Not a bad way to start this fight. Problem is, Ramsey's just in the pit, finishing off. Epicenter comes out as Notel gets burst down to start the fight, and S4 does not get off his ultimate. And they're going to have to waveform on out of there. May even be in some trouble if VP want to go for the chase. The Blink Bar are going to find Fly behind the Tier 1 tower. He'll get taken out. As VP used their vision advantage, they had a very nicely placed observer ward on the high ground by the shrine. And Ramsey's knowing that he can just finish off Roche for the team. Take that engagement. Great. The vision is really the big thing there. They had two wards protecting that Roche, one right around the river, one by the shrine. They saw that entire fight coming from OG. Well, at least Anna didn't die. <laughs> Seems like a kind of small thing in the context of how that fight really went with how many heroes they lost. I mean, this is how they draft them. They always, like, from experience, like, when we play against them, they tend to, like, like to pick heroes that are better in team fights but weaker in the lanes. Sometimes you see yeah. them losing in the laning phase quite hard. And especially with their supports, whereas VP have the complete opposite approach with their support picks. They'll pick the aggressive lane-dominating supports, the Ogres, the Disruptors for solo. Yep. The Night Stalkers, the Enchantresses for the, Lil. The thing with like Ogre and Enchantress is like those two won't contribute a lot past the mid game. Apart from like casting Bloodlust, you won't do so much. Whereas the Osprey and Wyvern, yep. they can do a lot in fights. And that's where, regardless of how big of an advantage VP might get, OG will still be in this one with a chance oh, in the late game. Ramses. That's an Aegis. Look to save it with the Enrage on out. He needs to be careful. If he does die, he will not have Enrage. When he respawns, and it looks like he will go down to the Magnetize. Just an Aegis claim with VP rotating and OG do need to get the hell out of here. Boulder Smash is there, but No Tail still in all kinds of trouble. <laughs> Blocks the entry, oh, but does no not TP. have a TP. He would have been able to survive if he had one. He's trying to just turn and fight, but fortunately, without a TP, he could not escape. But again, space, space. for Anna, you know, it's... Mm -hmm. Any time you can buy for the Morphling to get some farm is yep. going to be Morphling can time carry, well used. carry this game alone, allowed to get his items. If can get, the Lincoln's E-Blade is really where he's got to get to. Those two items will give him the burst damage potential That's to get involved. another 10 minutes. <laughs> if he's lucky. Yeah, I feel like 10 minutes for both those items is if things go well for OG. So they have the Blink on Gustav now. Let's see if they can get a good split, win a fight. Steals the replicate. <laughs> it's possible though, they have uh, three big... Oh, okay, Osprey has no ulti, 40 seconds. They yeah. can use this oh, three big ultimate. They found their spirit. I think they may no longer want to use those ultimates. Problem is, Brewer's being found in the side. No silence though, so he does get off the split. And it looks like they may be able to bring down the Sand King here. That's, That's good. Definitely That's good. good for OG to start things off here, trading the Earth Spirit for the Sand King. and. Possibly looking for more. No one is fairly tanky with this Yules and Hood, so maybe not the target they want to go on. As the Primal Split wears off, it likely is time for them to retreat. Anna and Lil just battling it out in the top lane. He's staying in this lane all the time just to hit him. Lil, yeah. yeah. He's so obnoxious right now. He's just throwing Impetus after Impetus. He's yeah. stealing his ultimate. He's just throwing creeps at him. This is... Oh, oh he misses the waveform. But yeah, Lil does have a TP, but can't use it against the adaptive strike. Okay, he might actually be. Yeah, we'll it's see. TP support coming in from the Sand King, and I think the chase is unwise at this point, given how close to that tier one tower you are. And yeah, they scan it. Well, they don't know what they scan. That was actually just Lil's Enchantress. <laughs> the two supports are just looking. 
yeah. this, this small thing, he goes to mid lane and then the ogre runs up to him, hits him. <laughs> no one just runs at air main. This small thing is farming well, but it's not been easy. Bottom lane S4 oh, gets solo, solo kill? killed. Okay. Back to mid, Pasha. Thara strike to initiate in on the Pugna. Gonna see some turnaround here, but goes invis to get away from them, but the silence coming out. There's the Winter's Curse. Is this going to be enough damage? The right clicks are there. Anna perhaps putting himself in some danger here. Didn't need to waveform forward, and Ramses has showed up with a Blink Dagger. Goes on no-tell. It's going to be a kick away from Jerex, saving his life, and he's going to roll to save his own if he needs it, but bigger problems at the Shrine as Anna's Morphling does get picked off, and no-tell now in trouble. He just got the four stuff at the end, but he still got brought down despite activating it. And now with Exorcism up for a little bit longer. An arcane rune at that. <sighs> VP gonna take this That's T2 bad. mid, or at least do some good damage. You don't want your Morphling to die. Oh, no. So what else can they do now? They use the... Winter Wyvern's RT, they use their Magnetize, they use Split. Yeah, that was a moment oh, where... I guess Split was in the previous fight. Yeah, it's coming back up soon. They need all three ultimates on we'll the fly. Thing. They know where he is. They've got a high ground ward here for him. And they also see Jarex. Some great vision from Virtus Pro. Well, he actually chose to max D crap, right? Over Nether Ward. I didn't notice. So he has a level seen, 1. Mm. Yeah, I've seen quite a few Pugnas just get that one value point in the ward as the mid Pugna and max the, the D crap. Hmm. I guess With it's that really very good short cooldown. Both of them do a lot of right click. Yeah, smoke up from OG. This one undetected. Perhaps gonna sit behind Anna. <laughs> Lil is headed back that way to mess with him, and <laughs> could be to his own death. It looks like they know where Lil is, but Pugna yep. cannot do this alone. But in the meantime, VP is shuffling bot lane in. Ogre's pushing the mid lane in. Even if they Lil. get this kill, both the lanes are gonna. Oh no, Jerax is. Lil is surviving. He's healing through it. What? Oh no. He's not dead. Ha. <laughs> uh, that's unfortunate. They just didn't have the, the damage for it. Perhaps... He's yeah, actually quite tanky. Yeah, he's got a lot of stats with the, the Atos, and then he, the he survived on like... He got his heal off with about 80 HP, and then he just out-healed the life drain. If it was level 2 life drain, it would have been a kill, but... No tell, not quite level 12. Fly. They know he's fine. here. He needs to... TP on out. He will do so just barely before the Fire Blast arrives. Okay, they have to take a fight with the three ultimates. I think it's still possible for them to win a fight if they can land a good curse, yep. eliminate one target right away, and a good magnetize with this. They the need to kite out the Ursa ulti with maybe the oh. Wind Panda, the Cyclone. Death Prophet went back for a Midas. VP recognizing this game has slowed down. That is an unexpected huh. pickup. That is... I'm not sure not, what to make of it. Given the pace of this game and how much pressure VP putting on it, felt like they would just want to try and you, take all these out of towers. You kind of don't want to go late game against them. Yeah, and that's what the Midas is more suggesting, is that they are going to look to go late game, but... Interesting. Quite... Quite weird. But let's see. It might actually pay off, because let's say they can't pressure and Midas pays off. Yeah. He, he gets an item, an extra item, let's say, 10 minutes down the road. Don't about 10 minutes, but like, yeah, you know, like it'll, it'll pay off over time. It's one of those things where you, you do get your gold back, like maybe after 25 minutes I, of using it. I say it. it's strange because their lineup is built to destroy them now. You know, yeah. 20, 25 minutes, you at the very least want to get a second Roshan and enter high ground. It does help her level up faster is one of the things. Death Prophet has some very powerful talents at level 20 and 25. So getting to some of those could definitely help out. I guess that's true. Plus 50 movement speed at level 20 is crazy. Plus 8 spirits? Oh. Yeah. Plus and 600 health is even a lot, but we'll see if we're, when and where we get to those points. But S Second Roshan is coming up. That is EP did smoke up here, but did not find all too much out of it. They've got an Enchantress Creep camped in that Roche pit. And it's looking to build a Manta style. I think this is was just not the game for the Ethereal Blade. I feel like that was for me. That, that's just like your your standard go-to bread and butter Morphling build. Speed push. Manta gives you much more speed push because okay. he, he probably feels like he can't pick anyone off. Everyone's tanky. Can't really kill the Sand King either with the Sandstorm, unless you bring a Dust. So 
the targets you can kill is yeah. like I guess he Oga. feels like he needs to be doing much more fit pushing rather than yep. trying to ninja kill someone. Death Prophet Prophet's already built a hood, so there is some added magic resistance I don't there. Know. I think some players will probably go for uh, the E Blade. Yep. I'm not sure if you can say which one is better. They both do different things for the game, but I yep. think I feel like going for more speed is like a safer one. Oh, you definitely have a strong team fight, and that's something you kind of touch on. Like, they want to use those three big ultimates together, and that's where the Ethereal Blade does complement the team fight better than the Manta does, but mm -hmm. the split push element is oh, there. Smoke broke. Okay, they seem to have a general idea where they are. They need wards, they have no vision. They get one ward up, but it's not quite in the spot where they want to be, and now, uh oh, Pasha gets silenced up. Hit by the slow hit, do they actually want to jump on him? It looks like OG want to just reset. They have high ground. Yeah, they're going to... VP should not do VP anything. smoke? How far around do they want to go? It looks they... like they want to go and take the OG high ground. They need a better position. Who's got the high ground now? VP say. Oh, they can even hit to the shrine. Oh, no. VP just going to okay, go Okay, never mind. <laughs> Roche is up. You're in the Roche pit. There is no high ground. Say VP. And OG are just camping around their ward. We sailed this earlier with Liquid. You know, you want to fight around your vision. The problem is with Roche back and a Radiant Scan scouting out OG. VP know exactly what is going on and have secured themselves Aegis and Cheese. That is the big thing here. There's a Cheese on no one's Death Prophet. OG just need to get out, I feel, at this point. This is time to probably just TP on home. And problem is, Pash has found them. They are going to look to fight. They put the Nether Ward on the cliff. We'll see how well this can go for OG fighting into the Ace and Cheese so far. It's looking okay. The Death Prophet being focused down first. Can she get the Cheese off? No, she can't. That's a great start to the fight. OG looking good so far. Winter's Curse has been expended already. It looks like they want to go in the Enchantress, but with the heal there, they've got to switch their attention to the Urza, who's being kited around. This is going absolutely fantastic. The Epicenter Burrow Strike may be going to change the fate of this fight, though, as Pasha... Getting focused by Anna. One or two more right clicks could finish him off. Anna, will he get the kill? He does, but now he's got an Urza to deal with. He's being stunned up. Numbers favoring OG for now. They did not want to buy back on the Death Prophet. Anna getting low, though, and without any more stats to morph, he is going to go down. VP have outlasted OG. Despite losing the Death Prophet, the Aegis <laughs> that was the tipping factor. As good as you could get, I think, for OG. They killed two heroes, plus the Aegis, and they traded it for four heroes, being far behind. I, I, one of those moments where I'm like, holy crap, they're actually going for this team fight? Yeah, they have the vision advantage, that's why they actually yeah. have, they had the mod there, so they they're see. Just, they were, so, they were t so far behind in items, 12k gold deficit, up against Aegis and Cheese. They made the most of it, like you say. The DP going down there without doing anything, can't pop her Cheese. Yeah. That was very crucial. If I think if they pop the Cheese on DP, the stick... Uh, it's like yeah, a 5-0. The fight, zero, the fight is know? over. Yeah. That was just <laughs> like a GG fight. <laughs> They definitely recognize the importance of yeah, but, isolating But her. that was the first fight, Parker, that OG fought with all three ultimates together. But it also it felt like that, end of the day, VP walk away winners, even though they lose their Aegis, because they do get more kills, and most importantly, Morphling dies. Yeah, Morphling more. lives there, and it's like a 4 for 3 in VP's favor. Then maybe you're like, well, actually, it's okay for OG. They, they got one less kill, but Morphling lived. The fact Morphling dies, I think, means VP are going to be very happy. So right now, they are moving on to their next objective. So once again, placing a ward, vision into objective, vision into objective. Dota 101, once more, Parker. And now OG wants to smoke again. All ultimates up. Just about. They haven't got the Earth Spirit yet. It's just come up now. Can they get the jump? Can they burst down? No, he does not have the cheese this time. He is the target you're going to go on. Exism going. They're going to blink in S4's Panda. They want to bring down No one. He pops the Glimmer Cape. Can they execute him with the right click damage from Anna? The Cyclone going there as well, trying to keep himself alive. The waveform on through. Death Prophet is healing back up, and that is a problem for OG. They haven't got any kills. They're going to lose the Pugna, who gets focused down by Ramses on the Ursa. The chase is on. The root is there. Fly is next on the chopping block. As OG do finally manage to bring down the Death Prophet. Anna's second win there being enough to bring him down Jerek's being chased to the south needs to just tp on out of there back up to the top ramses is looking for s4 on the brute and will ultimately get him four dead for og anna wants ramses he's gonna go for it and gets the kill anna coming up big there tp'ing on out nothing okay there is something to cancel the yule scepter from pasha he then soul rings bar strikes through pasha Holy moly, this guy's insane. He's keeping Anna in place. He's locking him down, but there's a cold embrace, and that will save Anna's life here. 
Fly now can slow Lil a little bit. Will they go for some kills? Solo wants to TP on out. Adaptive Strike is not there in time. That was so big, Paco, getting the deep, the Ursa. The Ursa. And this fight, I think OG can say that was good enough. That Anna survives good. and get kills. That was more than great. No, that was great. They, you know mid fight when they cyclone the DP and he, he came down of the cyclone. <laughs> Ursa like went beside him and passed him the cheese. Oh, that's how he healed up. I was wondering yeah. how he, I thought it was like the spirit siphons or something, <laughs> but that was an insane amount of heal coming up. He uses himself and gets past the cheese in the middle of all that. That is some insane micro coming in. The morphing is getting to a point where he's strong enough. One more item. Come yeah. on. <laughs> Absolutely. That was such a good fight there. The death prop, you can see, still very squishy. And this is where that Manta build is kind of paying off. The right-click damage from the morphing really being yeah. shown in that fight. For, for VP, I think after this fight, they are going to be very careful with the next fight that they take. They are not as strong as before. The morphing is already reaching to a point where he's going to be quite hard to deal with. I mean, this is the kind of fight, right? You wish that maybe, maybe if the DP had more items instead of the, like the Midas, then he, he didn't die. Then you know, a lot of a lot of things would have been different. Yeah, but you know, even just the fact this death prop only has six armor right now. The last two, damage yeah, the last two fights he died. You know, like two fights in a row he died, and he he. You remember the first time he died here? Yeah, yeah. Around he the, just barely like any extra item, he would have got his cheese off, and the fight would have been different. Yep. That was the first fight. It does really feel like this Midas pickup has not paid off and it's hurt him more than it's helped. I mean, it's still paying off in a way, like he's getting more gold now, but the last two fights dying definitely set him back. Yep. Well, we'll see where VP go from here. They do still maintain a 28 to 9 kill lead, a very sizable gold lead. Well, but... right, right now you can see the big difference, right? I talk about when it comes to mid late game. The Ogre Ench is not going to do as much as the Earth Spirit Wyvern. No. The... Wyvern won't do anything if she gets deleted, and that's exactly what Ramsey okay. does in the mid lane. Not, I don't think that they can actually force objective, like no. losing a position 5. And now Morphing has space to push out lanes. I think VP needs to get a gem to control the map. Had pretty good vision control for a lot of this game, but it does feel like over the last few minutes yeah. after that team fight OG have. Morphing is going to start to speed push like crazy, you know. It's going to be quite hard to deal with him because they, their heroes don't really catch him very well. Like set the second stun, that's pretty much it. Oh, Solo glimmers up, gets the stun on Brew. Oh. Fire Strike to follow it up. Can they bring down S4? He's going to just primal split and that's <laughs> a good force uh... from VP unless OG can turn this into some kills here. They're looking for a Cyclone. They will catch Lil here to the south side. It's actually Sankin getting focused down. He's going to get drained out by the Pugna. Trying to escape will not be successful. Enchantress, meanwhile, healed back up. Brewmaster blinks away as the Primal Split ends. Still gets caught by the Atos and kicked away to the south. Jerex saves his buddy S4. For now, though, as no one will catch him with the Yule Scepter, and I don't think he'll save him a second time. S4 has to be left to the Wolves, oh, but our VP, no tail. Cold Embrace is there. This is not looking good. The Winter's Curse may save his life, though no tail will not survive. I don't think the Enchantress is there. Fly gets blinked on as oh, well. They have to use Trouble. Perfects. I think they have to use... Oh no, he's pulling the creeps away. He's okay. pulling the creeps. Yeah, there's a Siege Creep though. Oh. One Siege Creep has made its way through to disable the backdoor protection. Oh, no. The Wyvern can't clear the siege. Morphling is split pushing though. We saw this in the previous game. Morphling will push very fast at this bottom lane. The buybacks do come out, but can OG defend while Morphling rats? And it looks like the answer may be yes. Morphling at bottom does meet the Sanking and will just have to TP himself out of there. Back to the fight perhaps where they've already lost the Pugna. Oh, that's a dieback. That is indeed a dieback. There may be no Sanking here, but VP may want to press their luck. Death Prophet's ultimate cooldown at 48 seconds for now. Does have an Octarine call to lower that cooldown. Yeah, I'm probably gonna wait for the Rush and the DPLT. Yeah, safely. So Pugna will be back up by that point, but ultimately they can they take the shrines. It's still quite a quite a risky thing going up high ground now to force it because the morphing is quite strong. Like, look at his item. He's yeah, got the diff diffusal now. Yeah, he's really strong now. They need to be very careful. Uh, getting the Roshan and Cheese. Uh, I think OG can contest it. They should contest it. Try to get a ward up. 
around the Roche area right now because Roche is the next important objective. Yeah, they're going to smoke out for that. This is very, very important for OG. They need to be able to see this oh, coming. They smoke before it. Pugni even respawns. So this is maybe something that will catch VP by surprise. I mean, they think Roshan might be up already. Ah, the Radiant I mean, scan it, though. It is the right play because Roshan might be up and they might be already be doing it with the Ursa. Fortunately for them, it's not up and VP is not there and VP now know the positioning of OG to some extent through that scan. And I imagine VP, if they've got a smoke, are looking to use one now and head that direction. OG need to get down some deep wards. They get down just the one. I believe that's all they had for the time being as No Tail is going to be pushing out the mid lane. The fight could break out here. Ramses has a BKB. He's going to look to turn and fight the silence on the Morphling. He does manta it off as no one in the front line is going to throw out the ultimate. Now they need to try and deal with him fast. He is getting brought down very quickly by Anna. The defuse are going to purge him up. Anna going in. The Winter's Curse on Pasha's Sand King. They can't actually kill the Death Prophet as a result. Now they can get him down. The Brewmaster Primal Split really giving them a lot of control here. Pasha's now found Fly to the North. Looking to bring him down. The Primal Split throwing Enchantress up in the air. The waveform is there. Anna wants to focus on Lil, and it looks like he should have the damage to do it. The full stuff going to help him out, but not enough. As the Cyclone now catches Ogre as well. Anna may be able to get another kill here. He finds Ramsey, stops the Blink Dagger with that ultimate. Solo's Inv is not going to save his life. And OG are overwhelming VP. Three kills, no buybacks available. Sand King gonna creep skip the top wave to prevent any kind of a push. The DP needs like armor items though. He, yeah, he's getting shredded by the Morphling. I, I feel like he should have gone. The, yeah, the Shivers Guard just oh, seems like going, the item he needed. He's going BKB. Yeah, he, he's not going for it, but it seems. Mm. I mean, on the other hand, he's taking a lot of damage from the Nether War, the Panda, yes, the nice. Panda, like the split, the damage, oh the burn damage. I don't know. I think he needs a lot of. Uh, he needs a lot of stuff. Ramses, from... is he actually going for this? Has BKB in five seconds. Yeah, Roshan dropping fast. He scouts it out. BKBs. Anna oh. needs to get out of there. The full stuff nicely played. Buying time for these respawns. Roche needs to get back in that pit before they can hit it. And it looks like without a BKB, this gets a lot trickier for Ramses to contest. Is he going to go for this? Needs to backpack an item. It looks like that will not be an option for him. Oh, big, big tunnel on here. Oh, I think OG, OG do not want to fight though. They haven't got their ultis and they'll lose Pugna because of it. <laughs> get back indeed. <laughs> Good stuff. Makes the call. Back, back, back. Roshan. Roshan down. No tell. Dies again, but ultimately for the greater good. There's not been a very friendly game for this Pugna. We'll see what VP can punish the lack of buyback. They could try and press down this middle lane. Not going to be easy though. Like the Absolutely. ultimates are all back up for OG. Yep. And Morphling can just kind of go in and fight first if he wants to. He's so strong right now. Like Ada. It's almost gonna, he's almost going to hit that level 25 fairly soon. Get that extra waveform range, I can only imagine. Not the best of level 25 talents. Like, it's good, but, you know, like some level 25, you're like, holy cow, that's powerful. More thing, it's like, eh. Replicate damage can be good. So you've got Versing Enchantress, though, this game. Yeah, sometimes Replicate damage can be good. Probably not the game for it, but CVP finish off the tier 2, not wanting to force too much of a high ground push oh. against this Aegis and Cheese. I think once he gets this Skadi, he'll just be... He's already almost unstoppable. Once he gets the Skadi, Ursa's not going to do anything in the fight. So you just get kited. It's, it's crazy that we're talking about OG, like how they're in a good position with this crazy farm Morphling when they're behind 20,000 gold win total. Oh, they're actually behind 20k. <laughs> yeah. And we are talking about this as if yeah, it is a close game and that OG because, may actually be in a good position. Because of the overall lineup. Yeah. Like, the VP's lineup... They snowball very hard in the early game, but they don't use the net worth well. Whereas the Morphling uses the net worth well. Fly and Jerex don't need much net worth to do their thing. In team fights, they're doing damage. No tail as well, he's been dying so much, but in fights, he just needs to make sure that he drops his nether ward down. He uses his ulti maybe to save the Morphling and decrap, you know. Is there going to be a point where the Morphling can't do it all on his own? Is he going to need more farm on someone like the Pugner uh, or the Brew? I think it's a very good. <laughs> Very hard game for them to control the Morphling, though. Un unless they have like fight, like a Hex. I don't know, like they need somehow like an Abyssal Hex to control the Morphling. Fly's being found, throws a Winter's Curse here, but... Oh, nice Boulder Smash catches out all three. The Winter's Curse did not really catch all too much. The Decrypt on the Nether Ward does will... Does not have buyback. By some time, Ramsey's forced in forward, does have a BKB if he needs it. Meanwhile, it's Morph split pushing. You talk about how farmed he is. He can also hit buildings oh, incredibly fast. They're going to try to stop them from TPing back. Yep, with the primal split, that's the perfect way of doing it. The Sand King's the big one. The BKB from no one. Is he, he doesn't have There's a no TP. TP. It's oh, in, in his, his backpack. backpack. 
Oh, Morphling does not actually go for the split push instead. Comes back to fight. They want to try and punish BP. No one's going to have to pop the ultimate here. His BKB's worn off. He may just FB, get might be a down. FB. FB Santa Barra strike. In comes Pasha, saving the day. And it's getting low. He has still got the Aegis, but the fight is being lost for now as OG starting to melt. No tail, life draining, trying to heal himself back up, but does not have a good answer for the stun of the, of the Burrow Strike. Anna's trying to get some kills here, but is just getting kited around. Has only managed to find the one and now needs to turn and focus his attention oh, his elsewhere. He loses his teammates. He cannot 1v5. He and still relies on his team. <laughs> Osa was not there for the fight. So that fight, MVP sanking. That was fantastic. Happy center. Like, he basically killed almost the whole team. Wait, they this. use Cheese and Aegis for that fight as well. Oh no. Okay, suddenly oh, they have to use buyback. Um, may even lose some Raxi. We'll have to wait and see, but... And they're not going to still choose. be able to hold oh, here. Yeah, it yeah, looks like they will hold off of that. But the item progression, you look at the net worth, and I think that's really the worry for OG, and I think that's where this game is still very VP favored, is the fact that it is just the Morphling. Four VP core heroes trail the Morphling in net worth, and then Sub 10k net worth is the Brewmaster of S4 and the Pugna of No Tail. This Pugna feels more like a utility, a full position than a, a oh. mid hero right now. You're being nice, Parker. He's like a support now at this he's stage. A bit like I a think support. his job is to keep the morphing alive. Like you decrep him if you need to, you life drain him if you need to, and you glimmer and you just keep the morphing alive. Morphing is going to dish out the damage with the Spirit Magnetize and the Curse. Yeah. The problem is VP have four heroes dishing out damage right now. Yeah, but the thing is like. I would say it's much easier for Morphling to do the damage, like much more reliable and easier, like for for him than the Ursa, comparing to the Ursa yep. and the Sanking. Like Sanking hit a really big ultimate that time, but can he do it every fight? I'm not sure. Oh, blink in, they go to No Tail. He does get caught by the Cold Embrace to the south. Oh, Jarex, caught on the outside of the base and no Cold Embrace. <gasps> no buyback. Loses the gem as well. Pasha gonna pick that one up. Morphling it was needs a to force someone back base. Yeah. They're gonna throw the no-tail brewmaster ultimate the morphling is going to commit to the split push at bottom it looks like it is going to be a bit of a base trade here as brewmaster's primal split just going to be used to kind of delay vp perhaps stop some tps ursa has tp back though and is on morphling duty and it cannot really break through the high ground with the defenders there nice winter's curse onto the ogre going to buy some additional time here the shrine going to try and oh, help morphling. keep no-tail alive morphling dies Oh no! Oh boy, Ramsey's getting the better of Anne in the bottom lane. He doesn't have buyback, Winter. He doesn't have the money for it. He's 70 gold short, and I think OG. That was a big, big mix, misplay there by the oh, Morphling. Oh no, what happened? He actually went back in, he, he waved out, and then he decided to fight the Ursa, and Ursa just killed him with Bash. Well, it's oh. VP who will look to clean up the OG base. They may not know Morphling, but it doesn't have a buyback, but they're going to at least try and force a potential one doesn't exist and right now VP can continue to fight. They are getting a bit low here okay. and this may be a cause for concern. They managed to fall. 60 seconds But now more. Ramsey's coming is coming though and that is the big brute force of the VP lineup. And here comes the Enchantress have, as well. They have low, they are low on mana so DP won't be able to pop her next ultimate. Uh, uh, she'll be close. Oh yeah. Right. She's getting some mana regen there. She's losing mana actually. What am I talking about? The Pugna Ward is draining it. <laughs> now she's gaining mana. There we go. As Pugna going to have to force away from the VP onslaught. 30 seconds now. Morphling does have buyback. Did manage to get the gold over time to get back to this point. But at this point, he may just not want to use it. We'll see Death Prophet ultimate now. Morphling 20 seconds away from respawning. This is such a tense movement for OG. And it looks like VP. Oh, what a curse. His curse. Fantastic. Catches Lil. Doesn't quite bring him down. But the fly splinter blast will. Can OG defend their racks with five seconds on Morphling's respawn? It looks like the answer is going to be yes. No one wants the melee racks. He BKBs. He's trying to focus it down. Can they right click him? It looks like the damage is not going to be there for OG. No one happy to throw away his life just to take the objectives. Says Rax means everything right now to us. I think that was the correct decision for Ana not to buy back. I think he needs to keep getting items. Even though they have to lose the melee rex, I think it's still possible for OG to win from this yeah. position right now. But very, very difficult. I mean, we were talking uh, about a 20k gold lead that's been extended to a 28,000 gold lead. Well, it's still very possible though, because Morphing is so fast. Still very, very possible. Uh, so right now, what they need to make sure is everyone else has... Uh, so who used buyback? Uh, Pogna used buyback. 
They have feels uh, like one by the. <laughs> You say it's possible, Winter. Every time I just look at these net worths, I'm just like, it I is, don't know. It is possible. <laughs> Nothing can kill everybody. I have so... It, it, that's a, the problem is, his teammates are all going to die so incredibly fast. And once he's in that, like, 1v5, 2v5 scenario, I think he just gets controlled. He gets kited. Yeah, but, but if it, if they get a good initiative with the yeah. Earth Spirit or the Panda ulti... And a good a good Winter's Curse is essential yeah. for OG and these teammates. It's very fights. possible for them to win a fight. There's like there's no glimmer cape, there's no blink dagger on fly. That's the the result of the poverty is their supports do not have any items. Oh, sanking. Take out the shrine here. Huh? VP gonna try and fight them around that area. Doesn't look like it. Bit of money. We're talking about getting some support items. Well, killing shrines is one way to get some of that team money. He's very close to his butterfly. I think that that, that will be he, one of his strongest points in the game right now. You take, you get the butterfly and you try to maybe smoke and just run at them and try to like the butterfly just gives him so much damage he might be able to just burst the DP down from like one stun from the Earth Spirit and maybe a follow up stun from the Earth, uh, the Earth Panda. Two stuns might be enough for them to kill the DP from full to nothing. See uh, Anna just go in with a replicate to back him up and wave on through, replicate on out. The VP very likely waiting that next Roshan. They've got n neutral creeps just camping the pit waiting for it to respawn. Death Prophet's now hit level 25. At this point, I think we can well and truly say Midas has paid off. It's perhaps made the game a little tougher by not having another item, but it's definitely led to him getting more farm and hitting this level 25 faster. He does get those extra exorcism spirits. OG positioned around this Pugna Ward at mid are going to give up their position, it looks like. Morphling, does he go for the butterfly or save buyback is probably one of the, the big questions here. I personally feel you don't save buyback at this point. Oh, he's gone on Solo. Solo could be in some trouble here. Oh, oh I say that. He gets forced out the way. Anna needs to be careful. Gets kicked away by the Earth Spirit. In goes the death prop with BKB. Fly needs to find a good curse. Problem is he's caught in a terrible spot here. Forced out the way. Silenced up. No chance for him to do anything. And Anna... Gets glimmered to save his life there. He was in a terrible spot, silenced up without his Manta style, and it looks like OG are just going to have to full-on retreat. As Roche it's will be respawning and okay. gifting VP and Aegis and Chiefs. They used the DPLD, and they only lost a support. Yep. I Not the okay. real Brewmaster. Pasha thinks he's caught S4, but I think we'll quickly realize... Oh, wait. That's not him. Uh, but on the other hand, Roshan is down. Don't think they can contest this. That's still quite bad for OG. Quite bad indeed. Aegis, Cheese, multiple lives. No one going to be taking the Aegis. Cheese for the Ursa. I think he just needs to buy the butterfly and fight. Don't think. Yeah, if, all in at this if point. If he has to use buyback the next fight, it's going to. You're going to like gradually lose the game. It seems for now he's holding his buyback money. Maybe just not able to too easily get to that shop. Wait and see what. The DP be. was actually quite tanky. In the last fight, he was hitting him all the way, but he yep. was. Draining life enough from the Octarine and the Siphon. Yeah, he's finally got that. He's got that armor item now with the the Shiver's Guard, helping him out. See Anim able to purchase any additional items for this fight. He will have a buyback to play around with. Jerex repositioning to the north. Sneaky little spot for his Earth Spirit. Has an Observe Ward as well to give some good vision. This Pugna Nether Ward. 800 damage. <laughs> yeah, very hard to deal with. In goes the Death Prophet with Aegis. Not the easiest here to focus on. He gets the Primal Split up before Barra Strike. And S4 trying to zone them back and control them. Throwing out the boulders, the Cyclones, but ultimately unable to really team fight with this ultimate. And VP just seem intent to disengage, wait for it to end. But at the same time, this is time where the Exorcism will also be wearing off. In comes no one, forced to pop the BKB. He's zoning OG back deeper into their base, opening up the possibility just to focus down the tier 3 tower. The glyph goes out, and no one. Exorcism is going to wear off. This will heal him back up at least, but ultimately this will be the end of this current push. Time for Anna to get he's that butterfly, I feel. Saving his buyback, though. I think he should he, just He's got it. money for the, the Eagle Song. He's got... He's not doing enough damage now. I think he needs more yeah. items. Maybe he's considering something else. There we go. He's bought the quarter staff. I think he's just going to go buy the right? Yeah, some. he bought the quarter staff. He just needs to. He already bought the uh, ties. Yeah, he's six, seven hundred short of having buyback and the butterfly. But there we go. He's sending the courier off. 
He's going back. He's going bottom just to farm oh, a little bit more. 10 seconds. TP cooldown. Oh. Uh, okay. Lose a tier 3 tower. Not the end of the world for them. It's Pugna on high ground defense duty. VP mostly waiting for the exorcism. 15 more seconds. Here comes Morphling. Butterfly in hand. No buyback. We'll have to get a kill or two in order to get that. No one pushed onto the high ground. We'll take the Aegis more or less for free. The question is, what can OG do as he respawns? They silence him up. He has got a BKB if he needs it. I pass him the cheese. Okay, no one's got the cheese for this next upcoming fight. S4 goes in with the BKB. Has a primal split in two seconds. We'll need to use it. No one's going to BKB and ulti. OG once again pushed back into their own base. The Primal Split comes out. They want to bring down that Death Prophet. Can they get him before the cheese? He uses himself up. He'll have a cheese when he lands. And he does get it off. OG not having the damage initially to actually take this fight. And they don't get a Winter's Curse off. Instantly, double buybacks coming out from the boys in the dire side. You want to dream green. This is the time to really dig deep for OG as they do get a kill on the Ogre and force VP back, but more buybacks, more economic damage being dealt as VP. They don't win the game outright there, but they get one step closer. Now we are at a point where Ogre, the five position, is more farmed than four OG heroes with two. It's okay, Morphling can carry the game. <laughs> you say that, I don't I, I, don't, I personally, <laughs> you, you seem to have a lot of faith in this OG side. As time goes on, you know, it just seems like the situation gets worse and worse because... Yeah, of course it's going to be really bad now. I like, mean, Morphling... Death Prophet well and truly is six slotted. Same for the Ursa. The item advancements are not going to really yeah. get much scarier, but... Okay, I'll, I'll admit it. Morphing can't do it alone already at this point. Yeah. Because the, the DP and the Ursa are really, really tanky now. The it's so hard to fly to get good ultis off is what we're seeing. Butterfly hard. He needs, like, a stun from Earth Spirit and the Panda stun to follow up. To kill one target. Otherwise, Otherwise the four staffs, the glimmers just Yeah, there's to be too many of the kiting items yeah. now. Dealing with him very well. He doesn't well. have an E-Blade to like immediately burst someone from full blood. Yep. Well, we'll see where Anna can get to. He's picked up some boots of travel now. Again, not having the buyback though. Needs to be careful about how he plays this one out. <laughs> Chantra is having a fun duel with the Moji side. does need to play carefully without the buyback. Can sell his treads, it looks like, to get that. And they're going to actually smoke up on the OG team. He's not selling his treads. He has no buyback. Uh -huh. 600 gold shot. Yeah. Definitely a moment. Like you say, if he has to buy back, it's maybe just GG anyways, because then you're fighting with a morph who doesn't have buybacks. So you need to be winning these fights outright. Feels like OG for the first time, the ones making the moves. We'll see if it can pay off or not. They see VP now. Can they break the gap here? Smoked up S4. Maybe not the best initiator. Does oh, have a stun. Primal Split, gets stunned. Can they bring him down time? Has a BKB though, also gets Cold Embrace. Should be fine here to get off the ultimate. Morphling waves in, focuses onto the Ursa first. Can they actually bring down Ramses? It looks like the damage is not going to be there with the Glimmer Cape. Anna's just getting kited around, can't actually do damage. Is too reliant on some of those disables. Fly going to go down to the south as well. Again, unable to get off a Winter's Curse. In goes Anna, trying to get the kill on Ramses. The Butterfly almost saving his life, not quite. Ramses has a buyback if he wants to use it. The next target seems to be the Sand King. Silence up. He is going to get taken down. This Morphling is slowly doing some hefty amount of damage. Another stun coming out from Jerax. No one's ultimate does end, but it looks like Anna, running out of steam, needs to find a way out of this one. Has got the boots of travel. Going to get rooted in place. A waveform available in a couple of seconds. Get silence. There's the Manta style. Wave TP on out. Is there a stun? No mana for the Ogre. Not the fight OG were hoping for. Two kills for three. I guess not the uh, buyback on the sanking, but it's like not the worst, but also they needed more, it felt like maybe. A fight maybe, that neither maybe, team really maybe wins. Why weren't we able to like put out some extra? Like Morphing was dishing out a lot. Like if someone else had the chance to cast an extra spell, something extra, you know, one more spell, and someone would have they would have gotten another kill. But it's pretty hard for like fly because he has no like look at his items he has yeah, nothing he's at all nothing to help him out no blink four staff glimmer cape this again just the deficit is just insane at this point it was up to like thirty five thousand at one point back down to a bit but still like you, you look at the net worth right how how can the fights be still close 
And that one, OG definitely, for the first time in a while, did get the jump. I mean, the previous fights weren't necessarily that close. It was very buyback-driven that OG were able to hold their high ground. You can see a recap there of just what went down with Anna able to, to finally show the strength of this Morphling. Six slotted at this point, has got the Moonshot as well. Is there any items that would change the pace of, like, change the face of the game right now? Well, everyone else is just too poor. They can't buy I mean, it. Has, who, who on the, yeah, no one on this diary is getting an item. Oh, Spirit Axe, I guess that's probably the biggest item. Oh, he's actually get. got close to it. Almost has the farm for it. Yeah, Doesn't yeah. get the, uh, the pull though anymore. Needs that, he gets that from his level 25 yeah, talent. Yeah, but still the... I, uh, the, s the save on the morphing could mean the world. For and even just a, a blink stone with a kick initiate, like initiate on the enemy and kick them into your base. Yeah, I, I did. You kill the death prophet first yep. when he comes, when she comes up. And that could also be the how you set up Winter Wyvern to get a good ultimate off. You initiate in as Earth Spirit and you set up your Wyvern for a, oh, Anna. a good ulti. OG, do they want to fight outside? It seems for now they are considering it. Pugna. Force back up, and it's just going to go top. He wants to apply some theoretical split push threat. And he's got an MKB I was just thinking the evasion with Ramsey's having a butterfly, the Solar Crest on the Radiant side, this evasion is starting to become problematic. An MKB for the upcoming fight is going to be useful, but at I the same time, he needs to get there. Yeah. May just. Yeah, sure. diffuser, or you just like to... slot out your manta like after you use it, but I, I don't know. You want buy that though if you want it for the next fight. May even not have his boots of travel. Oh yeah. He's got the waveform range. That's a possibility. Possible. Yeah. Possible. But then he would have no buyback. Yep. So Aegis and Cheese now again. BP complete Roche control throughout this game. Get another Aegis Cheese. This one goes to the Ursa. The, the Ursa is like not doing as much already in the fights. So he gets quite, like, it's quite easy to kite him. They just need to make sure that... I think in the fight, if they can get the DP and just burst him from full to nothing, then the fights will be really good for OG. MKB, I think. MKB will allow them to do it. Once he has the MKB or Morphling, they stun him, they just wave in and just drop everything on the DP. Money for it, but like you say, may not want to buy it with the the importance of the late game buybacks. But we'll see where decision making process yeah. lies. Your X has enough for the X. No. Okay. Again, see how important they rate those buybacks. He is going in. No one is going to get initiated on immediately. Uses himself. Ramsey jumps the back line. Really wants to get this pugna, but the kiting is there. It gets cycloned up. This Ursa cannot do a whole lot right now. But similarly. Morphling not getting all the damage out. Ramses is going to be the one they go, and he's got an Aegis though, so even though he's been kited around focus, VP can now come in. Exorcism in five. OG, will they look to fight this one? No, the call is to back off retreat. Cut your losses. S4 will not get the blink off as Primal Split ends, and he goes down without buyback. Oh, but buyback. Lane's still pretty pushed out. The mid lane, perhaps the concern. And Exorcism is up. So, so maybe. What, what can they do now? They need to try to shove the lanes out. Well, no one... TP's top morphling is actually a little bit afraid of him, but it is just a solo death prophet. Well, they they, 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 don't, they, they, don't, they don't have time to shove the lanes Oh, now. they've caught the Pugna. I think VP realized that they could maybe find some picks in the enemy base, but they don't quite latch onto it. Instead, yep, they found the Earth, the uh, Earth Spirit of Jerex now. Winter's Curse comes out trying to save Jerex's life. He's going to roll himself on out of there. Back into the shrine. S4 does actually get his buyback back. Just needed a little bit longer to actually get to that point, and he just barely had the gold for it. Somehow. One man army, Parker. Yeah, I mean, every single time VP push, it's like OG lose two or three heroes, lose two or three heroes, have to buy back. The brew, the wyvern, the earth spirit, the item progression has just halted. Pugna is just dirt poor. Earth Spirit's the second most... Earth Spirit's actually the one who's... Somehow, I don't know how, is getting the most farm on... 90 gold talent, bro. Ah, ah that's that's the <laughs> the money maker in a game like this. You wish you had a GP... Wyvern wish it, wishes she was level 20 right now. 120 GPM there. Yeah, that's awesome. For a game like this. But not getting to that level 20 stage. Anna can actually buy his MKB now and still have buyback. Yeah, he should. I think he should. There's no other items to really consider. I mean, there's a the level 2 Hey, wait, box. the Ursa... Didn't the Ursa have... Oh, he saw his Butterfly? I thought that he had Butterfly. He did? 
He sold it and got an MKB. Now it's now you so don't need the no, MKB. There's actually. no evasion items anymore, right? Just the solar crest. It may actually not be the item you need to buy. What solar crest? On ogre. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I I thought you were saying like the. <laughs> What's Morph morphling buys a BKB. There we go. He had this queued up earlier. Um, Must have spotted that Ursa sold the butterfly. I think Ramsey's realized the way to win this game is going to be killing Morphling. So butterfly as a survivability item doesn't help. You want the aggressive items. Enchantress, is that the uh, stealing oh. en Enchant Infects Ancients, level 25 talents coming into play. Jerex not even buying his Ags, recognizing how important this buyback can be. And we've seen basically OG is still in this game because of buybacks. They've used over 10 buybacks this game. How is this ancient thing going to affect the game? What's the best, best creep that he can the get? The granite golem, I oh. imagine? Yeah, he's got the granite golem now. Oh, that gives everyone a bunch of health. Plus 15. Oh, can go to the top lane. They really want this. Yeah, 15% bonus. Health. Oh, the death buffer is going to get about extra four, 500 health. We'll find out soon enough, Jerex. He tried to kick him in. Spells. Yep. Trying to come in from behind. He's got two Ancients to back him up here. Morphling in the front line is doing some good damage. Goes for the BKB. Mana not really finding the best target to go on here. And they're going to lose the Earth Spirit. Buyback comes immediately as he tries to chase after Ramses. Ramses does get back to the low ground and keeps himself alive. The Rack's still alive for the time being. But Glyph has been forced out. With Exorcism wearing off soon, this could be a fight that's going to swing back OG's way. Epicenter, Burrow Strike, Pasha goes in, doing some good damage here. Wants Anna. Anna getting very, very low. Does have the buyback. May, if he goes down, have to use it here. Doesn't want to. No shot trying to life here himself back up. But the damage coming out from the Enchantress from the low ground. He's missing though. No tail still alive just for a little bit longer. He's got buyback now. Anna still alive through it all. Took out the Death Prophet and somehow OG are holding it. Did cost them once again multiple buybacks, but this time they're getting a few more kills. <laughs> Sand King oh looking God. to get away. The Magnetize is going to wear off with no more stones left to play around with. Uh, defense Derek's... number 30. <laughs> <laughs> this is like that X Hero Siege custom game in Warcraft 3 Dota where it's just like, you know, the minions, they keep coming down. It's never ending. It just gets harder and harder, but. You get slightly stronger and stronger each time, and somehow OG are still alive, have still kept themselves in this game. And they're doing so without, like, it's so hard. Like, again, why when we don't see the Winter's Curse come out? But that's because VP are recognizing how big of a threat the spell is. They're focusing down Fly there, making it impossible for him to get spells like it off. Who's going to be the ones with buybacks now? That is two buybacks used, both Pugna he mothing, what, what can, and What else can Mothing buy? I mean, you, uh, rapier. It it really is just rapier, right? He buys a bottle. That's what he can buy. Oh yeah, well, getting a bottle at this stage is a fight. Yeah. You get a good rune. Good DD rune for a fight. And Morphling is very stat heavy, so all of that Agi means like a double damage rune gives you plus yeah. 300 damage. And he's just there. We go. The blueberry rune spawns. That is. That's a free rapier for the upcoming fight. <laughs> If there is a fight, I and mean, again, you, if you see this, if you're a VP, you're like, okay, let's, let's chill a bit, you know. You let's know what? fight into the rapier. Maybe they should try to distract the enemy, and then he goes bottom to red. <laughs> I don't know. He buys a gem for the team. He's buying the support items right now. Has got a demon edge in his backpack, Winter. It's for the, uh, it's for the rapier, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, come on, let's, let's lose the talk. Did you buy any monkey keeper? If what I butterfly? Oh. If you had it on the crew. Well, he's got it there if he needs it. An eight-slotted Morphling with buyback and moon shard. Unfortunately for him, he has like no teammates to like pull moon shards to. Like uh, panda. <laughs> <laughs> for hit. <laughs> it's like a bit dubious. If the panda is rich, it's actually quite okay. If the panda has item, it is. I, I, <laughs> the ogre is richer than the panda. <laughs> but again, you talk about how these supports don't you know actually why? go that... You know why ogre is gold talent? Yeah. This is a game where you wish you have gold talent. Ogres are going to hit level 25. Like, they're, we're going to see some crazy... What's the 25? 40 bloodlust attacks. It's got to be that, right? But that's not really that useful. Ursa, it's like, uh, okay. And that goes into the mid lane. S4 backing him up. And against Silence. Needs a way out of this one. Does BKB immediately. He's saying the morph stats. He's got the DD room, but he's got to find someone to hit. He finds on the high ground the Enchantress. The decrep is kind of working against him for now. Anna 
can't actually use this DD rune to great effect immediately. He's now getting healed up. Pasha going for an epicenter. He doesn't actually get the blink off after it. Now he does. Burrow Strike catches the back line, finds Fly on the Winter Wyvern. There's a Fire Blast to follow it up as well. Wyvern getting zoned back. Can't find that Winter's Curse just yet. As the kiting from both teams is so formidable that neither team has actually lost anyone. S4 needs a blink out. He doesn't have a BKB or a blink. His buyback's still on cooldown for a minute and a half. He is dead out of this game for over 100 seconds. Solo. <laughs> Solo. Walks to the high ground, pops the cheese. He's baiting spells. He's not afraid right now. Maybe he should be. As Ramsey's engaged in, Anna gonna waveform his way on through. Finds another target, finds the Sanking, immediate buyback, but it's the Pugna who's dead without buyback as well. OG maybe being punished now for not having these buybacks. They do get the kill on the Ogre. Anna getting very low waveform back to the high ground here. He's in some trouble. Cold Embrace will help heal him back up. May be forced uh... to buy back. Kicked in as Anna goes down once. Will buy back immediately. No glyph available. I think VP realized a buyback on Morphling right now. That's the first time he bought back in the game. <laughs> yeah. So... But DP, DP is going to have her, her next ultimate up in 10 seconds. And, they, and now they know. One kill on Morphling and game is won. There is no other hero <laughs> who threatens you. The Brewmaster will have a buyback for the upcoming fight. His buyback is just about 30 seconds away. But here we go. Those two heroes still dead. They oh. don't have buyback yet. Lil needs to be careful. And it is there. Oh, he actually kicked He's got away. a replicate in the fountain as well to help him out if needed. They're going to give up the rain track. Fortification back up for OG. At this point, it doesn't even really feel like Mega Creeps is going to secure the game. No one trying to just focus down the racks. Oh, look at the God, damage. The damage from Anna. He is destroying no one, only now with the BKB. Ramsey just jumps the back line, takes up Fly, who immediately buys back. Anna really wants his death profit, needs to get him, does get him before the heal comes in. Anna, he replicates out at the last second. He's still alive. That was so close to a kill. They defend it again. <laughs> Game Somehow, is still alive. Wow. OG have not capitulated just yet. But they don't have any more buyback on the mall. Yeah, there's going to be an Aegis and Cheese for VP. This is going to be what? Roshan number but the six. Cores, I don't think the cores have slots to take. We uh, saw what the Ogre could do with Cheese there, you know. He, he <laughs> made some spells. <laughs> That's your bro. <laughs> Down? He's got that plus 40 Bloodlust attack speed now. 100 bonus attack speed. Dude, Bloodlust on a Chandris! Oh, oh, okay, they're going in. They are looking to fight. They really want to take this. To VP, Lil's in trouble actually. He's not got Cheese or Aegis. We'll have buyback available. Death Prophet's still dead as well. I think OG realized VP are actually quite weak right now. Solo trying to run away. He gets slowed up by S4's clap. He will appear in just a second. Vanna will waveform on forward and look to finish off this kill. Not sure he wants to necessarily dive onto the high ground for this one. Does actually hit him with the stun. 5v3 for now. But buybacks are there and available, and OG don't even have their entire team pushing okay, forward. How many buybacks are back for OG? Let's see. They've got Brew, I believe. Uh, and only one. Brew Master. Yeah, more thing is on. has three buybacks. It's a rapier type. That's what I want to know. But every item. I guess you. They're pushing forward. They say I'm more thing to have buybacks, but let's go for this. They're even just an enchantress dead, they feel is enough to take a fight. It's a lot of damage coming out from that Bloodlust Enchantress in the back line, but Anna needs to be careful. BKB use. He gets helped out by the Activate Remnant, but that was while he was BKBing. Perhaps not the ideal oh, way for the them Rex. to play he's out. going for the Rex. Yeah, oh. he's going to have to Remnant himself out of there. Or I say Remnant, replicate himself out of there. Just saying the Ember Spirit. And he will leave Earth Spirit to die. Does this guy have buyback? He does not. Oh, no, no, he does in 20 seconds. He's, he's, he's going to be okay. Needed. 20 seconds away. He BKB'd as the Earth Spirit. Use the uh, the stone, the activate, whatever it's called, the enchant remnant. Enchant remnant, Parker. No, it's a spell you don't see in many games. Hi. <laughs> what is the call for VP off of that? They did not have to buy back the Ench. At this point, Ench is actually one of their their main damage dealers in these fights. Yeah, he, MKB. He, he was actually doing a lot to the Morphling in yeah. the previous fights. Him and the DPLP. Those are the two things killing them off. And of course the Ursa. If he gets to hit the mob. The fight he gets hyped. 
actually going to oh. initiate on in. They want to go on Ramsey's first. He has got the Aegis, though. Can they find this curse? They still have not had a Winter's Curse, it feels like, in a good 30 minutes here. It's just so hard for Fly. They will break the Aegis to start things off. Ramsey's Ursa has just been getting kited all day long this game. And they're going to waveform through. Goes in on Ramsey's, really wants this kill, needs to be careful. He's getting stunned up. He cannot afford to die. Where is the curse? Fly is silenced up. He's got the curse now, but he's been Yules. He can't find the curse. He's silenced again. Oh. And with Earth Spirit oh, dead, without buyback, this could be it. It feels like OG have finally been bested. It took 67 minutes, but... This will definitely be Mega Creeps. The question is, what can Morphling do? Has not got buyback, and I think without spells like the Boulder Smash, the stun, the Winter Wipe and Cold Embrace, this game is very difficult for him. Morphling going to wave on forward. He really wants to go in. s is in trouble. He's BKB'd up, but he's just got no ultimate to play around with, and now it well and truly is. Anna versus the world. The buyback from Brewmaster will buy him some time, but he is well and truly alone. It has been the story of this game. Anna alone trying to carry it for some time, and it took 60 some odd minutes, close to the 68 minute mark for VP to secure the win, and a 46,000 gold lead at the end. But VP have done it. Well, it was still a very, very difficult game considering the, the kill score. You expect the game to be more like lopsided. But, you know, overall lineup, team composition, like. OG's lineup uses their net worth much better than how BP's lineup yeah. uses their net worth. So, in the end of the day, OG still played really well in terms of how they held their base and kept their buybacks. They did a lot of really good moves. They understood what they needed to do to hold the game and draw out the game and give themselves at least a chance of yeah. coming back into the game. Definitely, I mean, it's one of those things where it's there's a lot to maybe to compliment OG and their play and their resilience, their high ground defense, but they need to also, moving forward, put themselves in a position to have stronger early games because yeah. they, both games, they got crushed in the laning stage. They were playing from behind. And when I say behind, it's not like a small deficit, a couple of towers, a couple thousand gold. It's 10, 15, 20k gold leads that VP got. And the laning stage was just disastrous for them two games in a row. So it does feel like a an issue with them that VP are really good at exploiting. I mean, this has been uh, their, kind of their weakness uh, for some time now. That's how they approach the games. They rather have like a stronger team fight at the expense of a better early game. Yep. And in a lot of the games, they were able to actually pull through and win some key fights. But this game in the early, I think the, uh, the first two to three splits, they were all not good, not very good for OG. And the, the first like big victory was like when they split with the Earth Spirit, Magnetize and the Curse. That was uh, when they at least what broke even in the fight where they were able to burst the DP down. I remember that fight quite clearly. Yeah. They had the ops and VP just got Roshan and Cheese, but they It is time to wrap it up. Day two of TI7 concludes. And indeed, it was Anna versus the world there as Morphling did their very best to try and keep that game flowing for OG. The score may have looked rather one-sided, and as I admit, I am well distant from our analyst. Once again, let me reintroduce you to them. It is the quintessential man from left to right. We have, of course, CCNC. We have the man who brings the storm, a man who lacks no willpower. It is, of course, Blitz. And ah. someone who is just a little bit sweet right meow. It is, of course, PyCat. Good to have you on the end, the Swedish supermodel. Gentlemen, I know you hate that. Sorry, the yeah. face says it all. It's yeah. really quite fun just to see him squirm. Um, OG squirming in that one. I mean, I think your word's actually quit. I'm going to start with you because you were like, how is this game still going? You have to reflect with that one. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, these games like this where one team is just super far ahead the entire game. Yeah. They're getting kill after kill after kill. But it's sort of like, you know, we've talked about in the past, uh, the, the LGD saying, if you can't go high ground, your lead is false. I love it. And that was kind of the case. They, they just couldn't go high ground for a really long time. The pug, the drains, mm. Morphling being annoying and slip pushing, Wyvern Ws, it's just like really hard to go high uphill. Yeah, and I mean, I, uh, and I, congratulations is in order. It wasn't necessarily this game, but though OG didn't manage to make it a 2-0, two of them did enter the record books. A big shout out to Nahaz, who brought our attention to this statistic, but... No Tail and S4 have joined a very exclusive club. They are now one, uh, well, two of three players who have broken 900 pro Dota wins. So that's kind of cool. Uh, that's a big, big number. Uh, scary stuff. And someone actually, if you go to Reddit, you'll find it. But someone listed the heroes. No Tail still hasn't played in a pro Dota game.
It's going to be a lot of fun. But, um, but Will, what do you make of it? I want to kind of get your thoughts on this entire day. You've been casting. You've been hanging out with us. We've been talking Dota for what feels like forever. What game stood out most to you here in day two? For me, it was a series I casted. It was LFY versus IG. Mm. For us, uh, if you saw LGD, they got kind of their bell rung today. They lost two games. It looked a little bit sloppy. And I know we had that debate early on where we were thinking to ourselves, who's better, LFY or LGD? Mm. And today, LFY proved that they are the team to beat right now. Still have not dropped a single game. I think they're the only team that hasn't. And they look dominant doing it. When I casted them, I was like, ah, this lineup looks a little bit awkward. Doesn't matter. Just runs over IG. And this is an IG squad that won DAC, got top four at the major. Didn't right. matter. Just absolutely crushed them. No respect. LFY running over IG. Not only that, they're getting G VP to GG out in 15 minutes. I mean, PyCat, 10-0. 10-0. What do you make of just the way in which they're doing it as well? Hey man, it's a LGD like a LGD classic. They've they've done that before. I think yeah. it was at uh, I think tier three. They were really dominant in group stage. Even in uh, tier was it tier two and I think tier three they did really well in group stage. Sure, tier they two was this, the one where they were like thirteen and all. Right, I think. yeah, right, yeah. They went on some six pre. So it's like LDD, I think they're very strong when it comes yeah. to these internationals. China, they can be behind. Like it looks like they're not doing well, you know, during a big par portion of the year, and then. Come TI, it's like they just, you know, they shift into another gear and they're, they're ready for sure. Yeah, LFY really are picking up momentum and doing so fast as well. Now, what was your game while you were on the microphone, Pycat? Did you choose one well, that you really stood out to you today? Well, I just liked the game because it was, it was a bit reminiscent of TA6 where uh, Empire against EG. Rezo kind of started, you know, doing the old split push with the morph. And it was, it was good to see. He was like, he took out a Rax on bottom lane and he went, started, he just straight went for the tier fours when uh, EG went for his Rax. And it was just fun to see. They unfortunately lost the game. Yeah. But it was, it was fun to see. It was like, it was very, you know, very similar to what happened in tier six. I am sensing a theme here. Twice we've mentioned Empire, twice we've mentioned Resolution, and twice we've mentioned split pushing. Is this just something that Rezo is going to be doing, Will? Is this what he's going to be getting up to when he's uh, filling in? I mean, this guy doesn't really, he's more of a traditional carry in the sense that like he's yeah. not going to fight. He's going to try to exploit every advantage. I know when he sees an opportunity like that, he's probably one of the carries that really looks to exploit Commits that advantage. It, yeah. Exactly. But at the same time, I think right now that kind of style is a little bit rough to play around. I know when me and Pika were talking, you said you felt like Morphling was a really underwhelming hero in that sense. Yeah. Mm. But I think the one thing is though, like when you play that style, I just think that the fact is like you have to, everyone has to be on the same page if you play that style because you have to know because if you don't know that you're playing that style, then some guy is gonna, you know, overcommit to the fight. Because if you know that one guy's split pushing, then you can take the fights with the mindset that, well, we're gonna get one side of racks here. So you're we don't really to need to time. commit. You're just trying to waste time. You just run in a little bit and you don't have to overcommit to the fight. So you don't step too far into the fight. And because of that, you don't lose that many heroes. And so you just waste time and they lose structures and then they become, then they become anxious. So if you're kind of not aware of this split push, it's really hard to pull off. But if everyone is on the same page, it can be really efficient. I think nowadays it's pretty hard to pull off these hard carries because you have to commit so many heroes to the hero's lane. You have to last pick the hero. And you've just committed all these resources to this one hero. Whenever you do that, your other lanes are going to suffer generally. The supports can help out the enemy mid and crush your mid laner. Their carrier will probably have a good matchup against your off lane. So you end up being like all your eggs in this one basket of having a hard carry that has a nice game. And sure, maybe he has like good matchups against the other heroes. But he's in a position where like his whole team is behind. He's struggling because everyone has a lot way more net worth than him. And you end up playing this like split push game from behind, sort of like we talked about. And it's like it, it's very much the person. Don't you think on that the people invest hero. a lot in their mids though? Yeah. I mean the I think the main reason is nowadays you notice even the teams that are really successful, LFI and Liquid, whatever hard carry they have, they bring them to fight. Right. Nowadays I, I was watching the LFI game, I was casting that against IG. They have a terror plate. This guy still He's moving around the map, he's taking towers, and then as soon as he has Manta and Metamorphosis up, he takes fights. This Medusa doesn't really need that many items, but it's kind of this weird thing where, as a carry, you're no longer the carry. I know we talked about it, like yeah, how the did. carry role is yeah. a little bit more wonky now, where you're not really, you're not really the focus. And I mean, especially both of you guys, like you're a mid player, you're a mid player, you're a carry player. Your roles have entirely just switched. Yeah, for sure. I think so, definitely. And I mean, you can see it even from like, I don't know, some player like, for example, Arteezy, who used to be used, like, he's used to killing creeps, right? Yeah. He's used to farming for an entire game, but now even we see him a lot on this Venomancer and other heroes that kind of just, they create pressure and he makes space for Sumail. And that's kind of what the carry role has become, I think, a lot of the times. 
Are you okay with being out of the limelight, Pycat? I am totally fine with yeah. it. I think uh, I think it suits me. I'm uh, I'm happy to make space. Plus, so. I mean, talk, being out of the lights would be good for you. I bet you don't tan. Do you tan? <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Okay. I'm work I've been working on this graveyard tan for a really long time, <laughs> yeah. you know? It's really I'm fun. I'm rocking the Edward Cullen, you know? It's fun when the makeup lady does you and then does me and she looks at her hand and she's like, oh God, no, we've got to go dark. Um, skin aside, guys, they've got some highlights. Uh, I know we were going to quickly touch on, on your match first, but I do want to bring this one up just because I know you had some stuff to add to it. It was, uh, it was Enchantress in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, it was just, it was kind of cool to, like, it was, like, so close, so many times, and then he ends up and then they all spam oh, no. chat wheel. <sighs> of course they do. I know you're a big fan of the chat wheel as well. Yeah, it's, it's a great addition. Yeah? Dota. What, what was your favorite what one was, again? What was your favorite uh, one? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> He's good at He's it. been saying this the entire day. You say you way. hate the child wheel, but I hear yeah. you say it more yeah. than Just that else. one. That's the only good That's one. That's the only one. Okay, wait. So in your, in your in your game of Dota, there is one chat wheel sound. No cosmetics. No cosmetics. Do you just have that one chat wheel sound no on red all river. your chat wheels? Is that what you do? Uh, I you do just not have, have a compendium. <laughs> yeah, but like, have you have you changed all your chat wheel commands for just that one? Uh, I don't have it, dude. Oh, you don't have you it? Don't even no, have it. Damn. You, you, you get it from the compendium, dude. I don't you don't have, have a compendium? Wow. Why are you here? That was like, that's a prerequisite at least. <sighs> okay, his know. hands are up, and we'll be talking more about to these guys as we continue to work our way through the day. LGD Liquid caught our eye for one reason or another. In fact, a good start and a bad finish seem to be the read between these two. I mean, X Liquid's good I start, bad finish. Does that kind of resonate with anyone here on, on the couch? Yep, that's the big kill. A split series in the end. Uh, when I was uh, when we used to work together, anyways, that was always kind of the that was always kind of the thing is that Liquid could win the lanes and they could take one or two fights, but when you play their kind of style, if concentration slips for even a second, you're gonna get capitalized on. And we especially experienced that against the Chinese teams because they're so five man heavy. You can see exactly just how good it can look for Liquid. There were some plays in particular as well. Something that was interesting. What did you make, Pyke? Because you told me in day one that one thing you have to do. And the, that Liquid have a lovely luxury of is that you have to take Cottle and you have to take Io away from him. They, they gave him Io. They gave GH Io. They did twice. They did yeah. twice. And I mean, the first game, it didn't work out that well for, for um, Liquid, but I don't think that was so much on the Io. I think, uh, although you can see that in both games, uh, LGD's response was AA, which is like a counter to, to Io because you can't heal through it. Um, but I think in this game, it was just they had a very like right click focused draft. And the X and the um, Sven, they both yeah. counteract that very well with the Sven's armor and the X, kind of just jumping in and, you know, that Monkey King, he can't do that much. So uh, just, just because we're on the topic, you used a particular phrase, which I thought was interesting. You said, this draft is so LGD. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, like, I feel like LGD, they have a way of drafting where they really like having balanced drafts. Like, sure. they want to have a bit of, they want to have, have a bit of out spam. They want some stuns. They want a bit of late game. They want some kind of strong lanes. Mm. They just, they want the whole thing. There's Balance. no, there's no spike, you know? It's like some teams, like you see the liquid draft, it's like, it's kind of all over the place. They're going for this weird brood. They do profit with a lot of different summons and stuff. Whereas LDD, they just go back to these traditional, like stuns, a bit of late game, out push, and then they just play Dota from their comfort zone. Mm. And I mean, there isn't much you can do about that, right? Like, I mean, Quinn is like, Playing Dota, playing that kind of that I don't know, is vanilla the right word? Vanilla Dota, Pycat? I don't know if it's vanilla. It's like it's I mean it's like traditional Traditional, okay, that's a traditional word. kind of Dota. Traditional it's, it's LGD just, Dota. Yeah, it is. I mean the one thing is like it's it's kind of predictable. You know, you know that they're gonna do it. Sure. So knowing that you can you can try to find your own way to ex to exploit it. Mm. But the problem is that it is it is kind of balanced everywhere, you know? Yeah. So it's well rounded. So they're kinda covered from most angles. But I think if you you know, if you manage to push the right buttons, then you can kind of break yeah. through it. Okay, so while they, you know, if we describe LGD as that balanced burger with just the right amount of meat, buns and lettuce, we did have some spice off the other side of the lobby. Indeed, I mean, we have that clip of GH's save because that was, that was noteworthy. We got to see him with one of the recalls I think a lot of people will remember over on the internet. I don't know if we have shown it to you. Let's see if we can go ahead and bring that up. But it, it was one of those kind of, it was evidence as to why you take IO away from Liquid. Yeah, I think it's kind of interesting when teams, uh, they t pick a hero that's typically banned and they choose to not ban it and they just play against it, like the Wisp and the Coddle. Um, they just let them both in. Uh, yeah. You know, they decide we're not going to... There it is. 
We're, we're not going to continue to ban these heroes and let you know exactly what the first phase is going to pan out. We're going to, you know, surprise you a little bit. You're going to get the IO, and then we're going to have something prepared to deal with it. And you know, they they went one and one, but. You uh, you almost have to have an answer for these heroes like that because if the enemy team knows exactly what you're gonna first phase and they can just plan things out, you have an innate disadvantage. That's such a such a safe play. It's like he waits he waits right until the end of that chrono, gets him out, he tethers the wolf who's in this and just keeps running away so he gets just far enough away so it's GH and Matumba and then TP and then just instantly TPs. Like, I don't think the casters realized he was TPing because there was just so much happening in such a short space of time. GH, I think, was doing that whole thing in slow-mo. You've got a big smirk on your face, Blitz. You yes. like that kind of play. Oh, um, my. Why do I play Dota? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just don't understand it. You see stupid stuff like that, and it's just like... What do I try? Oh, my God. I don't even know. That was so much fun because I, I wasn't watching the highlight. I was watching these guys' faces, and they're all just kind of wide-eyed. One of the plays of the day, for sure. Um, another one, perhaps, to be added to the pile was when we got to see Cloud9. It hasn't gone well for Cloud9, but there was some slight, slight light at the end of the Gold tunnel. Rams Indeed, their dreams were not just the memes. We got to see a coil link it up. I'm pretty sure Ramses was just greedy here. He had, he had, the, he had the mana void up. He could have turned the fight around. Was this the game where Dro went four staff and Lich went Shadowblade? He went. He went. Hood. He, he went pipe. Out of pipe yeah. on. Uh, pipe on Drow. There was like fear made some tweet, and he's like, "Why did? Why is Just the Drow four going four staff and yeah. the Lich is going shadow play?" <laughs> no, I think Drow went pipe. I don't know if he had a force as well, but he I had a pipe. He and Lich had face boots and yeah. shadow blade. Yeah, I was also kind of, you know, I I'm not sure what that's about. It won. Yeah, Envy does that on Drow. I think he does it on Slark as well. Right. Yeah, I think he like really likes yeah. this pipe item. Yeah. For one reason or another, it's a good item. The pipe Just is really cool. Not something you typically see on you know Drow. Yeah. Why were you smitten by the pipe? I think it's like uh, one of these, the, the new idea of carry kind of the, that we talked about. This and out of the limelight carry. It is yeah. the, the carry that kind of focus on, it's a team centric carry that it doesn't, its job is not to carry you in late game, but right now I think a lot of the carry's job is to kind of carry you through the mid game because you're the one who has a good start. And with that start, no longer can you use it to farm more to amass more resources, but you need to use that yeah. to help your team get resources instead. Enable and your to lich. Do that, yeah, exactly. To, to do that, you need to be the one who's kind of in the heat. You need to be the one, you know, taking the heat, and you build this yeah. pipe, you kind of help your team, you get your towers. Well, I mean, you're going to bring the heat with some stats, Will, because we were talking through these. Like, in terms of hero stats, have you actually just... Are they just <laughs> Why are you laughing, dude? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what are you laughing about? They're important to the game. They are. We all know stats mean everything. No, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing at him. Yeah. Bringing the heat, dude. <laughs> He's okay, always okay. laughing at me. All right, so so far today, I, these are the ones that stood out to me. Dazzle, 6-0, completely flawless. Most games, uh, it's the hero that has the most games and the highest win rate. Okay. So 6-0, perfect record. Uh, you've got Earthshaker, who is the most picked hero of the group stage so far. And he has above a 50% win rate, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. And Nyx Assassin is like 17 games, 79% win rate. And if you think about these heroes, like... Earthshaker, we all knew yeah. he was going to be one of the most contested heroes yeah, coming in. Sure. Nyx Assassin, I feel like it just counters all these meta heroes. It is, right? Because almost all the mid heroes right now, like a lot of them at least, they're these int heroes. Yeah. I mean, there's always at least one puck or some some random, so, I don't know, DP or whatever it is in the game, co-op, stuff like this. And this Nyx, he's just really annoying against it. Yeah. As well as like Batrider and stuff like that. And I know uh, we, yeah. I, we talked about a Quinn as like, when you're a mid player and you're playing, you see a Nyx, you don't feel good. Yeah, uh, there's like you, your hero pool gets reduced from like ten to like three instantly. Like it, it's just super uncomfortable to play these in heroes against it. It's really miserable. He camps your lane, burns all your mana. You can't cast any spells. The game so, is not fun. So just for just for me and perhaps for some people at home, uh, a noob friendly answer. You said it goes from ten to three. What are you instantly ruling out as soon as you see a next locked in? Uh, you don't really want Quap. Yeah. Uh, you don't really want Puck. DP can be okay, but it's just these squishier heroes that can get bursted by mm. all the damage Nyx brings because you're an it hero. And it also sort of forces you to ban Invoker. I don't think you want Ember either, right? Yeah, There's you don't like really want... a lot of those heroes that kind of just... Yeah. And Ember is not because of the int, but actually because you can just carapace the, the shield. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Somebody once told me, like, uh, I think it was Crow said, some of these heroes, they're going to change the way that you, you play Dota. Like, you go from a standard game, and some of these heroes, like Nyx, Bounty Hunter, they change the, the way that you think about Dota and the way that you have to play. Like, you have to be a lot more aware. You can't just do your casual split push because this hero is going to find you. Right. 
Interesting. And just while we're on the topic of kind of heroes and, and the statistics, there was so much hype surrounding Clockwork Tree. These were all picks that were highly contested over in, in Moscow. That was the last time I was talking Dota with, with some of the guys here. What's happened to them? I mean, have there, has there been too much, you know, nerf bat? Has, has the meta developed? What's the story? I think the game changes pretty fast. Yeah. I think that's one of the things. I mean, it always goes in circles. Like, you find a you find a counter to something, and then you start, you know, like the teams that are ahead are the ones that are doing the best. So you need to think like, okay, why is the stream good? Well, because he works against certain heroes that are being played right now. Okay, then people start figuring out if Trin is worthy of a first pick. Yeah. Then you need to think, okay, how do we counter this first pick? Because he's the one that gets picked. Then you start thinking, okay, now we can, you know. Now we can pick this hero that has uh, damage over time. Understood. And then Trian kind of goes out of the meta, and then maybe one of these heroes comes in. And then maybe because Trian is gone, then some other heroes come back into play because he was kind of hindering these heroes that need to go kill heroes. So yeah. it's like a big rock, paper, scissors with a bunch of heroes. And really yeah, it just changes good like answer. that. I like that one a lot. Rock, paper, scissors, as the meta is always evolving it always is in dota and as are our standings they have evolved from old to new we present you a transformation this is what it looked like at the start of our day you could see lfy were four and zero and we giggled and we chuckled and we said okay things are gonna change into day two and they did um however the goose egg did not they have still got a zero in that column. Keep your eyes as you glance across them. You'll see Liquid were doing well. You'll see that Fnatic were having quite the bad time alongside Cloud9. Neither of them putting a win in their category in their first day. But if we do wave our magic wand, I don't know. Is there a magical wand that we can wave? Do we clap? What's the, what's the process we'll here? Go wave your magic promo wand. Code code BSJ. What is it? Promo code BSJ. Oh, yeah. <laughs> promo code BSJ. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we say that and we wave our, I, I do this, I reckon. I'm really throwing production under the bus here. Watch this. There we go. I've changed the standings just like that. <laughs> nice. She's shouting at me right now. She's like, why have you done this? What, how dare you try and use your graphic magic on this broadcast? But the standings have updated. And as we were saying, LFY standing vigilant at the top. The liquid storyline kind of continues with a couple of slips on the banana skin. Um, what else are we taking away? Fnatic? I mean, is that, that dream's dead, I guess. We kind of, not necessarily dead in the water, but... Two days out of four, you're struggling to get a second win on the board, Quinn. Yeah, it's, it's not easy to come back from that. Um, <sighs> you start to lose confidence in what you think is good. You start thinking, oh, should we try someone else's heroes? Should we try playing a different style of Dota? Yeah. And when you lose confidence, whenever you start not really knowing what's good anymore, it's very hard to get, re, you know, regain that confidence. Yeah. And I told you, it was just the clap. However, I need to work on it. I haven't used my graphical summoning clap in a while. We do have the... Uh, the standings on your screen at least all teams have now games like they've won games yeah. so i mean you said it didn't you Pika? you said that first it is, win is important. it is important i think for sure like it, it really doesn't doesn't feel good to have no wins man i've been there so well yeah. i mean if as this as this progresses well i guess our eyes are going to be drawn to that middle like as well, not only the eliminated team but also that battle from between like fourth and fifth as you kind of limbo between upper and lower bracket i mean that's that's a big win in itself right yeah, of course. When you when you get into the upper bracket, you don't really think this way, but you sort of think this way. It's like it's a sigh of relief. You know that you get to play real Dota. You don't get to the, go to the lower bracket where anything can happen. Sure. Some team can knock you out. Uh, reminiscent of the majors, for example, Kiev Major, where Secret got knocked out uh, by SG Esports. You have the sigh of relief. You've got a cushion more than anything, and you've got time to learn. Like if you take a look at Liquid's run. Uh, in the Manila Major, for example, they lost immediately to MVP Phoenix yeah. in the top end. Then they just went on a run to get second. You don't have that kind of run if you don't have that cushion. I understand. But I mean, do, are you, do you think that's a winner's mindset? Is that a winning mindset to have? Like, oh, we can lose a game now. Close enough. Second isn't like, bad. It's, it's it doesn't not just, sound good. It's not just a sigh of relief, though, I think. It's also about the fact that, like, you have a really good chance of advancing, I think, also, is something that when, when you're in the winner's bracket, every game you win, you, you know, you you move a lot further on the board. You know, yeah. if you win this, if you're in this upper bracket and you take a game, all of a sudden you're in top six or something, you know? Yeah. It's, it goes really fast in that upper bracket to, to kind of, you know, get into like a, a really good place in, placement. So being up there and taking a game is, yeah. oof, that feels I, good. I think it can be like a double-edged sword at times though. If you look at a lot of these, to these tournaments, the team that comes from the lower bracket uh, into the the grand finals like often will win because you know if they meet in the upper bracket final 
uh, one team loses, they go down and they make it to the grand final. The team that goes through the lower bracket ends up winning because they've, you know, they've learned a lot from playing against the team in the upper bracket. They lost. They figured things out. You know, EG being a big example, they get two. So, so would you C rather? Deck. Would you rather be in the lower bracket then? I don't know if you'd rather be in the lower bracket, but I don't think you're too sad if you lose in the upper bracket final. I think like making it there is like really, really good because you know you win, you're in the grand final, you lose, you've gained a lot of information. Mm, okay, All right. That's an interesting discussion we can continue tomorrow, gents, because I think it's time we have, we've kind of said our goodbyes. Uh, the scene is set for tomorrow. We're going to go ahead and show you exactly what you have to look forward to as the games will be coming thick and fast once again. It's a four-day group stage, and we now mark the halfway point. Currently, some teams are going to be starting to celebrate, starting to edge ever closer to, as we've talked about, that upper bracket and a crucial one at that here at TI7. This is the big one. And you have some big games to start it off tomorrow as well. You get EG Secret here on stream one. You get to see TNC versus IG. Fnatic taking on Empire. They kind of need to do more than they have here in the first two days versus Empire. And LGD will be taking on Infamous as well. So those are all your games to start you off across the four streams. Yeah, you uh, you start settling into TI. How's, how's TI treating you, Quinn? It's, it's very cool to be here. It's, yeah. like a, it's a cool vibe. You know, players just like walk into the meal room when you're watching... Know, games, something they're getting some food, they sit down next to you. It's like yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit, it's, it's a bit it's different cool. to the uh, yeah, it's, it's very cool. at home. You wait until that key arena gets uh, I mean, we're walking through it, we can see it taking shape, and it is taking shape, right? Uh, we took a parkour route through the uh, yeah. courtesy of Malini Thanks, this morning. Man. Thanks, Malini. <laughs> took us through, I don't know, we got funny looks from men in hard hats anyway. We should go because the men at Hard Hats have been at, busy at work and that main event edges ever closer. As this day concludes, it does mean that we are getting even closer to that main event, that opening ceremony and even that trophy lift. The prize pool is insane. The Dota is insane and we've seen examples of it here today in the group stage. More of it comes to you tomorrow though. So please join us as day three of TI7 continues after we go ahead and get some sleep. You should too.